Okay, let's start the session now. Uh, hello guys, good morning and welcome you all. In this AZ900 session, myself Archie Deser, I'm your host for this session. Guys, if you want any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We will try to help you out. Uh, let's moving ahead and talking about our event sponsor that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is an India one of kind co-parting learning solution company. Now you will get a question like who we are and what we're doing. So answering your question, we boost our offering and also give comprehensive advisory service to client who wish to modernize their framework. We educate, advise, implement and manage. Then the Synergetics solution offering that is Persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add on solution, certification solution, certification add on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales and pre sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. Then what does Microsoft certification does? It will give you complete learning experience. You will get trained to build appear for the exam and get certified. Uh, this is skilling journey here. You can advance yourself first you have to complete fundamental certification. Then you can go with the advanced rule based certification and expert level certification. In fundamental level certification, we have AZ 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900 and SC 900. In associate level certification, we have many types of certification here. You can see on my screen. In expert level certification, we have AZ305, SC100, PL600, and AZ400. Guys, also we have special certification that is AZ120, AZ140, and AZ220. If you want any certification, you can connect with us. Then certification offering. So certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. We do provide certification add-on, onboarding add-on like short duration modules and more. We're moving ahead and today training is organized and handled by the ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. Under ATC community, we have Emerging Technology Community for All. Then Azure Tech Community for Punekas. Emerging Technology Community for Suratkas. Azure Tech Community for Nagpurkas. Guys, you just have to install the Meetup app and you can follow our communities there. Then you have to follow the code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note that participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. We will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. So today's speaker for this training is uh, Ms. Dr. Prinka Sarude. He, she is a cloud and Java consultant and currently work with Synergetics as a cloud consulting. Agenda for this webinar, you will get to know more about the topic and benefit of it. In this session, we are providing you AZ900 Learning Achievement Badge. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated badge. Guys, don't forget, don't forget to follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for upcoming updates and upcoming webinars details. Uh, thank you. Now I would like to hand over this mic our speaker. She will continue ahead. Thank you, Ati. Good morning, everyone. Very okay, good guys. morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, guys, so let's get started. Let me share my screen. Once it is visible, kindly let me know. I hope my screen is visible. What I'll do, I'll open the chat box side by side. 
I will share my yeah, good morning. Okay. Okay, guys. So today I'm here to deliver the session for AZ nine hundred. Okay. So let's get know each other and thanks for joining me today. So I am your instructor uh, till two thirty, and uh, I am Priya. I am Dr. Priyanka Sarode. I'm a Java full stack and cloud consultant in synergetics. I have total twelve plus years of experience in teaching and corporate trainings. Uh, okay, and I am working for synergetics as a technical trainer. I have already completed my certifications uh, AZ nine hundred, and along with that, at uh, associate level as well. That is AZ one zero four. Okay, uh, I have conducted uh, different batches uh, for the cloud uh, concepts and uh, on the certification based batches over there. Okay, so let's get started. I just want to know from your side, okay, that uh, all of you are at least aware about the Azure part. Okay, those who are not uh, having any idea what is Azure and all. Okay, so I must say from today's session, they'll get the really understanding about what is Azure, what is cloud computing, what are the different types and concepts, core concepts related to the cloud. Okay, so uh, let's get started, guys. <clears throat> so uh, certification path. First of all, we have to discuss just uh, for one only for one to two minutes. Uh, so for the certification, if you want to cover the uh, expert level certifications, but before that you have to understand what are the fundamental uh, certifications given by the uh, Microsoft. OK, so for the fundamentals uh, perspective, OK, there are AI Azure AI, OK, then uh, Azure fundamentals itself and Azure data fundamentals itself. So if you go and categorize these three things, so right now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. I hope now it's visible. OK, so uh, when we are talking about Azure fundamentals, so it's categorized into three main parts, but right now we are at this particular path. OK. So we are at this path and we are talking about this Azure fundamentals that is AZ 900 so that in future you are able to do the uh, associate level uh, certifications as well. But first of all, you have to clear that uh, certification for the Azure fundamentals, then you are eligible for the. Different associate level certifications like administrator, developer, database administrator, security engineer and all. And if you completed those associate level, any one particular of the or all of this. So now you are able to go for the export level. Uh, certification that is solution architect or DevOps engineer. OK, so. Let's start with the. Complete Azure fundamental part, OK, so this course will provide the foundational level knowledge on cloud concepts, core Azure services. OK, we'll definitely discuss what is cloud and all and why we need it. OK, then what are the Azure management and governance features and tools? OK, now uh, the question come up uh, into your mind. Some uh, some of the uh, participants are really having that uh, questions. Uh, so can we go without any knowledge for this certification? So see, first of all, you have to understand the basic concepts. OK, we have to cover the three main modules over here. This is our first module. OK, so we'll cover our first module. Just a minute. Where we are actually talking about. Yeah, so where we are actually talking about the 
cloud concepts okay so here three main modules are there so the very first module is completely a uh, cloud concepts related module okay then uh, second module is completely all about here i just mentioned okay that is module 2 and cloud concepts okay okay those who are not getting my screen so kindly please rejoin guys as per my understanding some of the participants are getting let me check in the chat box yeah so guys please confirm is my screen is visible no ma'am okay just a minute Yeah, thank you, Archie. Now it's visible. I hope. Okay. So. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thanks for the confirmation. Okay. so uh, here we are discussing what are the three main modules in this az 900 certification okay so there are the three main modules the very first module where the complete cloud concepts uh, concepts are getting described okay we will discuss that particular module in depth then after that we'll move towards the uh, azure architecture and different services so here i just mention the complete architecture mod module is based on this architecture and what are the different services okay provided by the azure that we are discuss in the module 2 and after that in the third module okay so in the third module it's totally all about how you are to authenticate yourself authorize yourself to use and uh, create the number of the resources in the cloud okay so we'll discuss that part that is we called it as a azure management and governance okay so these are the three modules that we have to cover in today's session okay so first of all we have to understand what is the scenario before the cloud okay so see uh, whenever we are working in the organization or in any particular company so they have their own infrastructure correct so whenever they have their own infrastructure like there are number of the servers okay uh, networks power supply okay electricity they need to run those servers to get communicate uh, uh, through the machines okay so and to manage this particular servers this particular networks okay uh, machines overall the complete infrastructure what i am talking about the complete infrastructure okay so the complete infrastructure needs there are so many number of servers okay first of all we need that particular uh, uh, proper building okay that building contains number of the employees number of the servers number of the machines okay to run and to execute whatever the organization that belongs okay for example if i am not uh, uh, just uh, give you the in depth okay so just to understand like any particular it company okay having their own organization so they built up the complete infrastructure first of all okay so for that particular physical setup okay complete environment okay to build that environment first of all they 
have to uh, particular amount of money ready okay at their side so then only they can easily uh, develop the or purchase the servers okay space to keep these servers along with that network okay now we are using fiber optics okay so that kind of the uh, communication okay that kind of the uh, fast communication is going to be happen okay throughout the machine so for that uh, we have to install these networking uh, cables over there then after that make sure whatever the servers are there they are uh, every time available 24 by 7 so availability is going to be a very important task okay so overall this this particular things now whenever we are having multiple servers at that time heat is going to be generated correct now make sure if those servers are working 24 by 7 okay so at that time how we can manage the server so there is a one particular team we required ACs to cool down those particular heat and uh, the complete environment is going to be a uh, uh, make, make sure it's a uh, cool and calm over there so that any uh, disaster is not getting happened. OK, so that is we are calling all about the physical infrastructure. Correct. And this is the actual scenario when we are talking about before the cloud. So organization is basically uh, looking for the one particular space. OK, then purchase the servers. Make sure the servers generates the heat. So to cool down, cooling units are there. OK, so installation of cooling units, installation of uh, fiber optic cables. OK, for networking purpose, then to make sure like these all are working only because of the power supply. So electricity is going to be there. OK, so and to manage all these things, obviously organization need a different number of the teams, different number of the employees. OK, so overall maintenance is done by the organization itself. Clear. So this is the actual scenario when we are talking about the physical setup OK, or the complete infrastructure in the organization. But now, OK, now that and that is nothing but a capex. The term is going to be considered as a capex. What is a capex? Capex is nothing but a capital expenditure. What kind of the expenditure that you have to spend to build the physical setup? OK, so whenever we require that uh, complete physical uh, setup, OK, we required uh, that particular expenditure okay we required that uh, that much amount of the money over there okay so that is we called it as a capital expenditure okay now after that we are moving towards now to the cloud why cloud concept is coming okay and what is cloud computing is all about okay so here the very important thing is that just imagine like you are not worrying about to maintain the physical infrastructure. OK, whatever the number of the resources that you have to use, OK, whatever the number of the uh, machines that you required, only those machines you are building. OK, so this is we called it as a consumption based model. For example, a simple example. We are uh, using electricity now, uh, OK? And uh, whenever what we are paying, how much electric electricity that we are using, correct? So this is the one of the example that is we called it as a consumption based model. How we consume the how much uh, electricity that we are consumed only we have to pay for that, OK? So. This is we called it as a consumption based model. OK, but. There is a one another term comes into the picture over here that is operational expenditure. OK, those who are. Having awareness about capex and opex. 
okay so please remember whenever we are having the scenario before the cloud okay when we are talking about organization and uh, infrastructure or physical setup so there are two types of the expenditures that we have to spend uh, capital and or uh, capex and opex okay so capex is nothing but the cost which is incurred uh, to setting up the physical infrastructure okay now what is opex so the cost which is maintained uh, which is going to be used to maintain that physical infrastructure okay so we have to pay the bill for the electricity okay along with that whatever the team that we are hiring for the managing the servers managing the complete office we have to pay the salary for them okay along with that some of the time your server is not supporting okay whatever the servers that you are installed in the organization okay and after few days okay what happened that complete servers are you have to exchange that server or you have to remove and uh, make sure these servers are not working properly so you have to update and manage those servers maintain those servers okay so to buy or to replace these existing servers make sure like these are nothing but the maintenance costs that we have to pay correct and whenever we are uh, paid or spend the money for the maintenance of the physical infrastructure that is we called it as a operational expenditure okay so don't get uh, confused in capex and opex capex is just just nothing but the right now you have to set up the infrastructure or uh, set up the organization okay and after few days you have to maintain that okay to uh, make sure maintenance cost is come under the operational expenditure okay so there are uh, different terminologies related to this okay now when we are talking about the organizations infrastructure or physical setup okay that is capex and opex now what do you mean by this consumption based model so pay as you go here one simple thing is coming just just to understand the thing like uh, how much uh, area that you are using okay if you are going for the uh, restaurant you are paying for your particular kind of the food correct whatever the electricity that you are consuming okay you have to pay for that you have to book a taxi for yourself okay take a uh, taxi okay from one location to the other location and you have to pay for visiting that particular from one location to the other location visiting charges that you have to pay correct so you are using the taxis you are using the electricity okay you are using the uh, uh, restaurants okay for your own purpose but you have to pay only for what you are actually consuming okay so how much you consume only pay for that not more than that that is we called it as a consumption based model or pay as you go model and this model okay comes into the picture when cloud concepts is to be there okay so here in the cloud what is cloud computing so cloud computing is nothing but the delivery of computing services over the internet now what type of the services that we have to uh, deliver over here so there are three important services compute networking storage okay so please remember what is cloud computing so cloud computing is nothing but a delivery of computing services okay over the internet so make sure which type of the services that you are aware of okay so there are compute networking and storage okay so what do you mean by compute services what do you mean by networking services and what do you mean by storage services okay we'll definitely discuss uh, it in the second module but these are the different services 
but make sure we have to use those services over the internet. So only that is the meaning by cloud computing. Only that is the meaning of cloud computing, guys. Yes. So please make sure whenever that cloud is come into the picture, okay, it means there are someone, okay, sorry, sorry. There is a someone who is actually giving you these services so that you can easily able to do the compute networking part and storage part. Okay, so whatever the amount of data that you want to store, okay, what kind of the machine that you want to create, okay, then uh, when you want to get communicate between the two machines, okay, how it is possible. So with the help of networking, number of machines are getting communicated. So in the compute, just understand compute is nothing but a, this is your virtual machine. Just imagine, but what is virtual machine? Okay, so virtual machine is uh, one of the resource so that we can easily create the complete existing laptop or any particular machine, okay, on the cloud environment. Okay, so this environment here, compute, means that you are virtual machine. Now what virtual machine or whatever, whenever we are talking about the machine part, what we required? We required hard drive, we required operating system, we required memory, okay? So this complete part is come under the compute, okay? So whenever we are talking about virtual machines, it means we are actually talking about the compute service, okay? So compute service means what? We have to understand, first of all, how that virtual machine is built, how it is available to me, when it is available to me, okay? What kind of the operating system that I have to mention? How can I execute my Java program, Python program over there, okay? Can I design a web application over there? Is it possible? So what kind of the hard disk, what kind of the disk pattern that you required, okay? Along with that, what kind of the uh, networking that you want so that you can able from your machine to the other machine or you can use the internet over there, okay? Now, if you want to require the design a web application, okay, what kind of the storage Okay, on database part that you want. So all these are comes into the because of the compute. Okay, if your virtual machine is ready, you are able to connect with the other machine. You are able to create the databases. That kind of the thing is going to be a compute. That is your virtual machine. Okay, and this type of the services we can use. Okay over the internet so that we can build the existing virtual existing machine that we have okay but in the cloud environment now what is that cloud environment so first of all we have to understand what are the different types of the clouds that we have okay So there are three types of the clouds, okay? That is private cloud, public cloud, okay? And hybrid cloud. What is private cloud? Now this, this is going to be a, what uh, the one of the picture, okay? It means there is a one cloud which is built by and going to be getting controlled by this infrastructure or that organization, okay? So please make sure whenever we are talking about private cloud, it means all the services are in the cloud, okay? But this is going to be a controlled by the organization itself, okay? So there are no other particular, uh, these services are not going to be used by the other users. Only, only those users or those employees who becomes a part of that particular organization, okay? So private, private cloud is nothing but a, whenever we have that particular services over the um, 
compute services, networking services, and storage services. But these services are only binding with this organization. Okay, so when organization create a cloud environment, okay, in the data center. Now the term is coming data center. What is data center? Okay, so here just imagine when we are having the complete infrastructure, physical infrastructure, we need servers, correct? As I have, I have already mentioned over here, we need servers, networks, power supply, and all. Okay, so. Here, cloud provider is going to be there. Who is responsible for providing these services? Who is managing the this cloud environment for me? So there is a one particular person, as I have already mentioned. Okay, so that is we called it as a Microsoft. Okay, Microsoft is a cloud provider. Okay, so with the help of Azure. Okay. We can use this cloud services in the organization. Okay, so now what happened? Data center, it means there is a, in a worldwide, I just give you the one simple uh, look over here, just a minute. Okay, here I just give you the Azure global infrastructure overview. Okay, so this is we called it as a complete Microsoft data centers. How many data centers Microsoft overall uh, worldwide? Okay, worldwide, how many Microsoft uh, data centers that is mentioned by the Microsoft? So this is the uh, if you go and just check, these are the all regions. Okay. So we are coming on that particular point, but see, these are the number of the regions. Okay. So here, if you go and just check. Let me select any. Suppose this is the Japan East. Okay, this is uh, one particular region. Okay, so here this is the location. Tokyo is there. Okay, and there are so many this kind of these servers. Like we are having server room. Okay. So just think like this kind of the rooms are available over here. Okay, so the, there are so many different locations worldwide. These are we called it as a data centers. Okay, so where your actually machine is going to be created in the cloud environment. So this type of the server rooms available. Okay, throughout this. Okay, throughout this earth and wherever I have to just select like in the Australia East, if I go and just check in the Australia East, so this is the location. Okay, here all they mention. Okay, here open. So the complete thing is there. We go and just check. Okay, so these are we called it as a different regions. Okay, and in those different regions, we are getting the data centers. So data centers is nothing but this kind of the rooms are available where actually your machines are getting built up. Okay, so I'll just share that link in the chat box so that all of you are able to
get it. Okay, so I hope now this part is clear. So what is this cloud structure? Where it is going to be there? It is going to be in some of the region. Okay, through the world wide and whatever the region that you are selected in that region, there are number of the data centers. Okay, and these data centers in that particular data center, your organization is actually creating the complete cloud environment for you. Okay, and this now this particular data center is owned by that organization. Okay, that is we called it as a private cloud. So that the complete control is by that organization only. Okay, so we are not able to create. If you are not a part of that organization, you are not able to create or use any of the resource from the cloud. So that is we called it as a private cloud. OK, so that's why it does not provide access to the users outside of the organization. Correct. Now, whenever we are talking about public cloud, so what do you mean by public cloud? So public cloud means it is owned by the cloud provider and we are able to use those services. OK, we are able to create the resources. We are not worrying about that. We are a part of the organization or not. No, we just want the proper subscription. OK, make sure we are discussing about that part. What kind of the subscriptions that we require? So yes, with the help of subscriptions, with the help of your account management. OK, if you are authenticated, OK, and authorized person, obviously, if you are having account uh, with the help of Microsoft, OK, if you are opening that your account with the help of Microsoft. So yes, if you have your Microsoft account, you are able to create your own resources. How it is possible for that you need a subscription. But here we called this kind of the scenario is we called it as a public cloud. We are not restricting to that. We are becoming a part of any particular organization. No. It is not compulsory. That is we called it as a. Public cloud, OK, so. There are uh, how many different number of the services as I have already mentioned, we can use compute networking as well as storage services by using public cloud, OK, so it is going to be uh, accessed via secure network connection. Why? As I have already mentioned, if you have your Microsoft account, you have to authenticate yourself. OK, that is a part of governance. We'll definitely discuss that part. Then only you are able to do and use the cloud services over here. OK. So this is the way. <clears throat> That public cloud works. Now, what do you mean by the third cloud? That is hybrid cloud. Now, see some of the services is owned by the uh, private cloud. OK, and some of the services is owned by the public cloud. When we are making a combination of it, OK, but make sure how it works. There is a one complete uh, legal appliances that we have to follow. OK, rules that we have to follow and then only because Private cloud is getting communicated with the public cloud. OK, and make sure like organization have its own data. OK, so that data is going to be a. Make sure it's a. Secure data. OK, so make sure that data is not going to be a harm by from by by the public cloud. OK, so when public cloud and private clouds. OK. Uh, this kind of the number of the applications over there and whenever we are having those applications, we required some of the services from the public cloud and some of the services from the private cloud. So to host those applications or to run those application. We required both the clouds, OK, but make sure here we have to follow the legal compliances and then only that. Communication is possible. That is we called it as a hybrid cloud. OK, so these are the three different. Clouds that we have okay. as I have here also I have already mentioned. <clears throat> OK, now after that, whenever we are talking about. 
these comparisons. Okay, so what is the public cloud is basically all about private cloud and hybrid cloud. Okay, so we don't pay as I have already mentioned capex part capital expenditure. Okay, so if you are in a public cloud, okay, if you are designing the uh, uh, sorry, if you are uh, working on the public cloud, you have your own subscription, you are creating your own resources services. Okay, at that time you have to know pay. Okay, for the capital capital expenditure, it means you have to not worrying about the servers, how to manage the servers. No. OK, if you want to create your. Machine, OK, somewhere in the West US. Are you going to the West US and building up the servers and uh, taking up the space? OK, make sure that power city uh, power supply is there. This is not going to be your task. It's completely given by the cloud provider to you. That is Microsoft Azure to you. OK, so Azure is basically given this kind of the region. OK, where my. Data center is there. Now you have to just create your machine and select that region. Your machine is ready within that region. That's it. OK, so this is the way that. Public cloud is work, so there is no need. OK, for scaling up the infrastructure. OK, it means there is a no capital expenditure required to build up the. Complete server room machine and all. OK, so here user is not worrying about that. Applications can be quickly provisioned and deprovisioned. If you want any particular application which is going to be a. Uh, highly usable, so at that time choice is again yours. You can use that public cloud. OK. You can scale up your service. You can scale down your service. We are definitely discussing those points. What is scale up and scale down? Because these are the uh, what we say the features of cloud computing. Then after that, uh, those organizations pay only for what they use. As I have already mentioned, consumption based model or pay as you go model. So here you are not worrying about the capital expenditure. Then for what kind of the thing is coming to the mind. I am creating the machine, OK, and I am using the machine for my designing the application. Now, how much time that you have to use that machine? If you are using that machine for four to five hours, so you have to pay only for that much amount. OK, so here. If organization of or, uh, any particular user, what they use, they are using networking services, they are using storage services, they are designing the compute services. So they have to pay only what they use. That's it. OK, what do you mean by private cloud? So as I have already mentioned, it's a. Completely organization's choice. OK, so we are. Uh, External users are not entered over there, but along with that hardware must be purchased to set up the maintenance or to start up that particular thing. OK, so make sure what whenever we are talking about private cloud, first of all, your organization is ready. Then only for that organization, you are designing the services. OK, so organization having that cloud, having that particular environment, but before that organ to build up that organization, you had to purchase the hardware. So capital expenditure needed. Then complete control is uh, on that particular uh, cloud environment is by only organization. Other participants are or other employees, other uh, users are not allowed in that particular cloud environment, which is purchased or which is owned by that organization. OK, so overall, Organization are responsible for hardware maintenance and all the updates. Now see, after few years, we need to update those particular servers. We need to update those particular um, uh, whatever the hardware that we required. OK, so the complete maintenance is 
completely done by the organization itself but it is not in that that kind of the thing is not mentioned in the public cloud why because complete infrastructure is given by the microsoft itself so microsoft is the only person that is responsible to handle manage uh, to keep your machine ready whenever you are logging and use that machine that is completely managed by the microsoft itself that is the main difference between public cloud and private cloud okay and hybrid cloud i have already mentioned just for the security concerns uh, make sure there are some legal requirements okay there are the compliances that you have to follow okay and that control is um, uh, given by the organization okay but what kind of the compute services storage services that you want it is in the public cloud okay so security legal part and compliance part is in the organization's hand that is in the private cloud and what are the different services that you are using it's in the public cloud so it's a combination of both that's why this is we called it as a hybrid cloud okay so these are the i hope these points are clear like uh, what are the three different clouds that we have public cloud private cloud and hybrid cloud okay now after that uh I, we are not discussing that because i have already mentioned what is capex and opex okay so capex whenever physical whatever the cost that we are incurred for the uh, or spending for the complete to build up the physical infrastructure okay but when we are maintaining that after few years we are maintaining that or from the starting up to to create the team okay and to allocate the team to manage that uh, to maintain that and to manage that particular physical infrastructure so we have to pay to them that is we called it as a operational infrastructure uh, operational expenditure okay consumption based model as i have already mentioned that uh, whatever the electricity that you are using you have to pay for it if you are not using you are not worrying about that but the meter is on to your name so you have to pay such a particular amount of the money for that okay so that is we called it as a consumption based model okay now here uh, i am discussing about the benefits okay so i hope my screen is visible okay so let's start with the benefits what are the different benefits that we have okay so there are high availability scalability predictability governance elasticity reliability security and manageability okay so what do you mean by this high availability okay so let me tell you about one simple in a diagrammatic way so that you will able to understand okay so suppose this is the a one particular region okay what do you mean by the region so region is nothing but a geographical location please remember region is nothing but the geographical location on the earth okay where your data centers are available and what do you mean by data center so data center is nothing but a a proper server room which is already there okay defined by the cloud provider that whenever we are selecting that region we are having my machine in that particular server okay so that kind of the thing is there now suppose this is the a one particular region for example this is suppose your west us region okay and here i want to create a virtual machine so this is the one of the compute service that we want okay so i want to use that virtual machine 
and create over here. So it is not directly getting created. So first of all, it is getting created somewhere in the data center. So this type of the rack is there. OK, and my machine belongs to somewhere over here. Sorry. Somewhere from any one of the rack. OK, so make sure this is your region. OK, and here this is the server rack or uh, what we say the in the server room. This this type of the servers are there. And a, from any one particular rack, OK, my machine is going to be placed and that is not in my hand. It is completely done by the Microsoft itself. So we are not worrying where it is getting created, where that slot is exactly. Can we find out that slot? No. It's completely respond that is responsibility is taken by the Microsoft Azure. So you are not worrying about all these things. OK. Now, how we are to understand like if we are talking about this virtual machine, OK? So there is a actually a one shared responsibility model. We will come on that particular part so that you will be able to understand, OK? What is actually I am talking about? A minute. Let me check that I am having in the PPT itself or not. Yeah. Okay. So see what we are, what I am talking about. That is a shared responsibility model. Now, whenever we are talking about, don't focus on right right now for the SaaS pass SaaS. Okay. I'm just talking about on premises. Okay. On premises means your organization. OK, or you are the complete infrastructure that you want inside your organization that is we called it as a on premises. OK, so physical data center, OK, network host operating system, complete control over the network, whatever the application that you want. OK, whenever we are having number of the employees, OK, at that time. OK, so whenever we are having number of the employees, they have their own identity and directory infrastructure. So we are in the on the uh, when we are talking about organization point of view or on premises point of view, everything is going to be done by the customer itself. OK, and that dark blue color is over here. OK, so customer is only responsible for managing all the responsibilities. Or taking up all the responsibility. What kind of the devices that you have to install in the on premises? Okay, some are doing their work from the mobile PCs. Make sure their devices are authenticated. They have their own accounts and identities. Okay, what kind of the information and data it provides? Okay, so to take care of that information and data, to secure that data, okay, it's completely, it's completely done by the whom it's completely done by the customer itself. That is, we called it as an organization point of view. OK, so customer is responsible to managing all these things. OK, now when Microsoft comes into the picture, like if I am going to use the public cloud, OK, so at that time, Microsoft comes into the picture. Microsoft is a cloud provider. With the help of Azure, we can distribute those particular responsibilities. OK, now if we are talking about simple virtual machine. So now I want to design that virtual machine over here like this. OK, so where that rack is, 
where that region is okay so i am not worrying about their connectivity okay so it means physical data center physical network and physical host it means the responsibility transfers to the cloud provider okay so it means what like this hosting part networking part their data center part microsoft done by itself okay for me because i want virtual machine now what virtual machine that we want to design so we have to mention the operating system we have to mention the network control okay so network interface card along with that network network security group so that how much kind of the data that you want to allow okay which data that you want to get communicate over what port number that you want to communicate correct so that is we called it as a network control what kind of the applications that you want to design okay along with that identity it means the virtual machine that you are designing so you have to give that virtual machine proper username password okay so you have to maintain that identity okay for the infrastructure correct if you are designing virtual machine in the private cloud then only if you are designing virtual machine in the public cloud then only okay make sure you have a microsoft account you have a subscription you have uh, uh, completing the authentication process then what kind of the devices that you are using okay make sure that mobile you have to create the virtual machine okay and access that virtual machine from the mobile or pc so you are allowing the particular devices give the availability and give the allowing that kind of the devices okay to use the virtual machines correct now over that what kind of the information and data that you want to share okay what kind of the data that you want to require to build up the application correct so this is all about customers responsibility correct because i just want to create a windows virtual machine i just want to create a linux virtual machine so choice is mine okay i want how much hard disk that i want how uh, can we mention the subnet okay can we mention the networking control okay subnet and networks okay they definitely will discuss that part but this complete thing is in un under my control so i am worrying about only what kind of the virtual machine that i want to create okay i want to create a windows virtual machine or linux so it is completely decided by the customer i can create both okay so here when we are not worrying about this complete infrastructure their networking part okay only we are worrying about how to use this and how to uh, create those resources okay in a proper location or in a proper region so this is we called it as a infrastructure as a service okay so this is the one of the model again that i am coming up back to the model okay what are the different cloud services types that we have okay so make sure how it is highly available now i am coming back to high availability how this machine is highly available to me now suppose my one of the rack is going to be because of the power cut in that particular region okay maybe flood is going to be happened so that complete disaster is going to be there and this particular 
rack is not working properly then how i am getting my machine highly available to me so make sure we have to keep the instances ready okay make sure that is going to be a part of availability zone okay so make sure your machine if your machine in the is a part of availability zone automatically microsoft understands okay this machine is a part of availability zone and make sure that one of the instance is ready okay so it keep one instance ready if any disaster is going to be happen whatever the data whatever the complete thing that you have to manage okay in that virtual machine exact one copy is going to be there in the same data center okay and this is we called it as a high availability along with that you can set your uh, you can use the availability set as well now just to remember the names because these are the uh, high level concepts so when you are coming into the associate level course then only you will able to understand availability set part okay now suppose any uh, uh i just want to give you the any disaster is going to be happen make sure your machine is available to you how it is possible because automatically there is a one instance is ready okay and it is maintained by the microsoft azure itself if your machine is a part of availability set then because of the power failure because of the network failure okay due to which your machine is not available to you okay you are not able to access that machine so at that time there are the two concepts fault domain and update domain fault domain when your rack is under the power failure or network failure at that time your machine is still available to you because they keep the maintain that track okay of the instances so exact instance is automatically starts working and whatever the request whatever the types of the data whatever the applications that you want to work you can get back to you okay but make sure when power failure or network failure is there fault domain is working okay in the fault domain exact one copy of the uh, machine is going to be maintained that is one instance if we are having more than one instance that is we called it as a high availability concept okay along with that uh, what happens sometimes your rack is under the maintenance okay you, uh, there are some updations are going to be happen okay if any any one particular uh, rack is under the maintenance the complete rack is not getting available so at that time again because of the update domain you are getting your same virtual machine back because it maintains that same virtual machine instance in the other other particular location or that particular domain is actually a looking like the if your machine is belongs to that okay make sure any other one particular la, uh, rack is there okay and, and from that rack this instance is going to be a part of it and still you are able to access your virtual machine in this way it works okay so these are the this type of the racks are there if any one particular rack is under going to be under the maintenance other rack is going to be there to keep the instance ready okay of your virtual machine any any virtual machine that you want okay and automatically it is available to you that is we called it as a high availability okay now what do you mean by scalability so scalability is nothing but a horizontal scaling and vertical scaling so when we are talking about maintaining the same instances okay maintaining the same instances over here okay and i am not whatever the uh, operating system whatever the disk whatever the uh, cpu okay how much memory that you want exact copy of that machine is available okay that is we called it as a what 
वर्टिकल स्केलिंग ओके इट मीन्स वी आर नॉट वरिंग अबाउट द मेमरी पार्ट वी आर कीपिंग द सेम इंस्टेंस देयर I just give you one simple, simple example in our day-to-day -day life. Okay, for example, in the organization, there is a uh, one person who is a bachelorette. Okay, having a bachelor's degree and having so many number of the uh, load is coming onto him. Okay, and he is the only one person to inquire the things. Right at the inquiry section, if whatever the inquiries are coming, only one person is answering. Now workload is heavy. Okay. what happened when that workload is heavy the only one person is not answering okay for the after some time okay for the in number of inquiries after some time he is not able to give the answers in the same way in the same faster way that he answered to the first okay so what happened responsibilities here we have to make sure organization understands the thing okay only one person is there when we are having the season okay when we are having the inquiry in a one particular season make sure the same number of the bachelors uh, bachelors are available to me same number of the uh, bachelorette person i am going to available okay to the uh, inquiries now what happened inquiries are distributed i am opening the uh, counters for example if you are going to uh, pay the bill on the cash counter right now it's not possible i am just telling you one simple example because all of you are uh, what we say all of you are paying the bills through the online only okay now just imagine when we are having the uh, cash counters okay and when we are go and pay the bills Well, if it is a Diwali season, if it is a uh, proper one particular season where that particular only one person is at the cash counter, and we are having a long long queue, okay. At that time, only one person is not able to handle that queue, okay, very fastly. Now, at the hundredth person, okay, have to wait for ninety nine minutes if one person required to take a. Now one minute to pay the bill. Okay, it means more than one hour that one particular person have to wait. Here in a real world scenario, now I'm just giving you your kind of example. All of you are doing the shopping from the websites. Okay, like e-commerce websites are there, Amazon, Myntra. Okay, Flipkart, and we are having number of those particular uh sales. okay so discounts at that time everyone is hurrying and get and grab those things as early as possible how it is possible to manage all these inquiries throughout the world okay by the amazon itself by the myntra itself how how it is going to be possible so at that time this virtual machine is already there there are servers okay these are the servers suppose and these servers if having lots of inquiries so how that servers distribute the work okay so here they'll keep the instance ready so that exact same machine is going to be a ready exact same response is is going to be a ready okay so it means when inquiries are getting high when inquiries are uh uh really very very high okay from the user end and if only one machine is not able to or tackle that inquiries okay so at that time what happened yeah if only we are having those those number of the inquiries over here okay so single machine is not able to tackle that all the inquiries and give the answers and give the response back so at that time this machine load is heavy okay that bachelor person load is heavy what organization decides or what cloud provider decide make a copy of it hire the same bachelor persons okay on the in the organization so distribution of the work is going to be a possible 
so when we are talking about distributes and making the same instance that is we called it as a vertical scaling now what do you mean by horizontal scaling horizontal scaling means instances are not there please remember okay uh, sorry i'm 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 just sorry horizontal scaling is when we are having the instances okay and vertical scaling means like we are increasing the size of the machine so that only one single machine is able to answer that is we call it as a vertical scaling okay horizontal scaling please remember horizontal scaling is a instances okay it means like we are having the same copy of the machine but multiples are there okay multiple copies of the same machines are there and now what happened next inquiries is coming to this okay now this machine is also full of inquiries another inquiry is coming to the other instance correct automatically that instance is getting built and it's getting shifted to that particular instance that is we called it as a horizontal scaling horizontal means the same instance are uh, sorry same machine is there or same resource is there making the multiple instances with the same configuration we are not changing any configurations over here okay or we are having a one bachelor person now we are having 10 bachelor persons now we are having one cash counter uh, cash counter now i am opening the same same cash counter but for the three different windows or 10 different windows okay and now automatically traffic is going to be distributed that is we called it as a horizontal scaling no changes in the configuration okay but here when we are talking about vertical scaling it means actually we are talking about not to distribute the traffic over the instances handle the traffic by the machine itself but make sure that configuration we are changing what configurations we are changing we are changing cpu okay cpu okay disk okay which type of the disk can we store the data can we handle those inquiries at that time vertical scaling part is come into the picture okay so whenever we are talking about vertical scaling it means we are increasing the configuration if we are having the lower configuration settings we are changing it to the higher configuration settings that is we called it as a vertical scaling okay so that is we called it as a scalability okay so scalability can be achieved with the help of vertical scaling and horizontal scaling elasticity but may, elasticity is nothing but the scalability but make sure it is available at the run time that is we called it as a elasticity it means during the inquiry automatically scaling is possible that is we called it as a elasticity okay then security governance as i have already mentioned you have to mention the uh, which type of the service that you want to use at that time make sure you have proper uh, account okay you have to authenticate yourself make sure uh, whatever the subscriptions that you have okay so how much amount of the security that what kind of the application that you are designing okay so it is completely this kind of the benefits given by the microsoft itself okay so make sure whatever the applications that you are designing it is reliable reliable or not okay so how it is reliable what kind of the configuration again that you are using okay and if it is there then make sure your machine is highly reliable okay your application is highly reliable why because your application needs a database and it is available inside that machine okay so then only that your web application works properly so that is we called it as a reliability 
so these are the different benefits okay now i am coming to the next part that is infrastructure as a service or what we called it as a what are the different cloud service types that we have okay so there are three different cloud service types as pass and saas okay so when we are talking about infrastructure as a service as i i have already mentioned if we want to design a virtual machine that is infrastructure as a service okay so what type of the servers and storage that we want networking and firewalls okay and data centers and physical that type of i am not worrying about okay so all these are the things given by the microsoft itself okay so when we are not depending on these particular things okay that is we called it as a infrastructure as a service because we want these as a service we want it from where we want it from the cloud side we want the data center okay a physical or building where my machine is going to be created we want the networking so that firewalls and security okay again uh, when we are talking about to get communicate over the internet because these are the services and which is which is actually a working on the internet only okay so use those services over the internet so make sure uh, protecting those particular data secure data so again required that kind of the service from the cloud provider after that what type of the servers and storage that we want okay so it's completely not in our hand we are not worrying about customer is not worrying about these things but these services is given by the whom by the cloud provider or microsoft over here there are number of cloud providers all of you are aware of aws is there gcp is there okay amazon web services uh, google cloud okay just like over here we are using microsoft azure okay so here when we are not worrying and taking these as a service that is we called it as a infrastructure as a service and we can build up the compute okay we can only worrying about what kind of the operating system okay that we want so that customer is responsible only for data then uh, okay uh, network control okay after that what uh, what are the different accounts applications okay operating systems devices this is all we called it as a infrastructure as a service when customer is not responsible for this or we must say cloud is responsible for this infrastructure so this is we called it as a infrastructure as a service okay so here you can build with pay as you go okay that subscription is there so you are not worrying about that but yes which resources that you are Uh, built up over there virtual machines okay so make sure for that virtual machine how much amount uh, of the virtual sorry how much time that you want to consume that virtual machine it's totally uh, mentioned with the help of costing calculator okay and there are number of the calculators available so how much amount that you want to pay to create that virtual machine i'll show you in the practical way so that you'll be able to understand okay so this is we called it as a infrastructure as a service now what do you mean by pass so when storage networking along with that data center okay operating system and what are the different development tools or database management if all these services is design, uh, given by the cloud provider and we are only our customer is only responsible for designing the applications that is we called it as a platform as a service so that customer is only able to come okay open the virtual machine and automatically just creates what the application that he want okay so this pass that is platform as a service 
which is actually providing the complete environment to build, to test, and to deploy the any software application that you want. Okay, without focusing on the complete infrastructure part. So customer is only responsible for deploying the application, testing an application, or building an application. So that is we that service we called it as a platform as a service. Okay, after that. The third service type is software as a service. Now here, user is not worrying about a, where that particular, uh, where that particular uh, infrastructure, okay, where what is operating system, what kind of the database, okay, what kind of the uh, uh, networking is there, okay, what kind of the storage is going to be there. Customer is not responsible for all these things at that time. Then what is the customers is going to be play? What kind of the role is uh, played in the software as a service? So see, we are already uh, having the awareness about the Gmail Outlook. Okay, uh, Microsoft 365. So these are the different applications or we must say these are the different softwares, okay? Already ready. When you are creating any Gmail account or any, uh, out, no, sorry, it's a Gmail is for the Google. So uh, we must say any uh, Microsoft Office account, any uh, email account, any Microsoft account that you are creating, okay? Or you can use the uh, Outlook account, okay? So where your data is going to be stored? What kind of the database they, they are using? Okay, what is the networking uh, criteria they are following? You are not actually worrying all these things. You have to just use that software. Okay, that's it. But make sure you have that particular authentication. Okay, where on which device that you have to. Uh, create that account and use that account okay choice is yours so whenever what kind of the information and data okay so this completely part is done by the customer itself but it is not uh, worrying about the infrastructure part at that time those softwares when users or customers are using that is we called it as a software as a service okay so Customers can connect, okay, and use those cloud-based apps, okay. So they are not worrying about the infrastructure need, okay. They are just use those apps on which particular device that they want. Along with that, what kind of the information and data that they, that they want to share, okay. And along with that, they have to authenticate themselves. That's it. This is we called it as a software as a service. Okay. And the same thing here I mentioned. So if you go with the as, pass, and SaaS, okay. So that is infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. And here you can now able to see some of the responsibilities are taken care by the those uh, in the light blue color taken care by the Microsoft. In the dark blue color taken care by the customer. And if you go and just check for the SaaS, okay. For example, if you are you, if uh, any one particular customer of you want to use a software as a service, okay, at that time may have you have to make sure like uh, you have to be a part of that particular uh, cloud environment, okay. So you have to create a proper account, okay. Uh, you have a uh, proper identity, okay? Then only you have to use that cloud app, okay? So make sure when you want to uh, use uh, uh, Microsoft 365, so you have that particular account, Microsoft account, having a proper subscription to use uh, whatever the different applications uh, resides in that Microsoft 365, okay? So those applications that you want to use for yourself or for your organization, but make sure that identity is going to be a some part you have to ensure and some part 
is ensured by the Microsoft and then only you are able to connect with the cloud applications. Okay, or you can able to access the cloud applications. That is, we called it as a software as a service. Okay, in the same way, when we are talking about platform as a service, so applications, which application that you want to create, okay, what kind of the network controls that you want to give, or it's decided by the Microsoft and customers, it's, it's by the both, okay. So these are the responsibilities taken care by the customers as well as Microsoft. This is we called it as a shared responsibility model. OK. And uh, when we are doing the comparison basis, SaaS is going to be a pay as you go pricing model. How much Microsoft services that you want to consume only that much application cost you have to pay. That's it. If you want to uh, purchase the Microsoft 365 account is going to be there. But purchasing cost you have to mention, okay, so that you can use uh, uh, whatever the uh, that application software, uh, whatever the uh, uh, what we say the uh, number of the applications are there. Okay, so make sure that subscription is going to be along with you. Then you can easily able to grab that cloud application. Okay, pass only focus on the application development. Okay. And uh, we must say it's a platform management is completely taken care by the cloud provider. So that is we call it as a pass. And what is infrastructure as a service? This is we must say it's a most flexible cloud service. Why? Because only we are not worrying about where it is going to be created and how it is going to be connected. OK, we have to just design and create our own resources. That's it. OK, so you can configure and manage the hardware for your own application. OK, so you are the responsible for that. So that these are the basic comparison points uh, we must say. OK, for the infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and software as a service. So here I just mentioned infrastructure as a service. What kind of the service is there? So to create a virtual machine is a one of the infrastructure as a service. Platform to design a web app that is we called it as a um, platform as a service or containers. If you are aware about Docker and Kubernetes part, so uh, that part is also going to be there. So Azure Kubernetes service, okay, Azure container instances or Azure container registry that is going to be a part of pass, okay, platform as a service. And what do you mean by this SaaS? As I have already mentioned, like Outlook, Microsoft 365, okay. So these are all the softwares or cloud applications available. Okay, and these as we called it as a software as a service. Okay. So I hope this point is going to clear to all of you. And here is our mo uh, module one aims. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Paste it in the chat box so that I'll able to uh, mention. Yeah, definitely. Private cloud and on premises. Yeah, on premises, it means a complete infrastructure. Private cloud, it means you are uh, having the designing the or creating the resources, some of the resources like virtual machine storage, secure storage or database part that you want to secure over there. Or we must say virtual machines in the uh, private cloud or that. Uh, in the cloud environment and uh, you are for the security point of view, you are not sharing your database and you have to keep it in the on premises. So that is we called it as a, uh, a private cloud because some of the services still inside the organization, but some of the services are uh, designing the uh, on the cloud environment that is we called it as a private cloud and what is on premises and we to go and check for the differences. So on premises, it means everything, okay, database, servers, machines, complete physical setup is going to be there. That is, we called it as an organization or uh, on premises infrastructure, okay. So now I'm moving towards the next module. 
ठीक है सो वॉट आर दी आजियोर आर्किटेक्चरल कंपोनेंट दैट वी हैव ओके सो लेट स्टार्ट विद द सेकेंड मॉड्यूल आज योर आर्किटेक्चर and its components give me second i just take a sip of water so what are the different uh, core components okay so in this module we'll see the basic infrastructure components of the microsoft azure okay so that you will learn about the physical infrastructure okay uh, but from the cloud environment perspective okay so how the resources are managed and uh, have a chance to create any azure resource so yes we can able to create and where we are going to create so i'll definitely show you the demo as well how we'll uh, go and create a, a simple virtual machine what are what are the different uh, what we say uh, yeah what are the different uh, uh, resources that we are able to create with the help of uh, portal okay so definitely i'll show you that particular part but before that in the module 2 as it's a fundamental part so you have to just understand what are the different azure architectural components that we require to build up the uh, physical infrastructure uh, in a geographical region okay so what do you mean by the azure what is azure what is microsoft azure first of all okay so it's a cloud based okay it's a cloud provider i must say not so cloud based it's a cloud provider so azure is continuously uh, expanding the set of cloud services and it really helps you a lot to meet the current and future business uh, business challenges over there i must say okay so it just gives you the freedom to build manage and deploy your application okay on a massive global network okay using your favorite tools as well as which framework that you want so the again choice is yours i'll just come back to the this okay where you want to create and uh, which virtual which region that you are selecting so overall the globe you can uh build manage and deploy your application okay so what does azure offer okay so it's a i must say you can build on a trusted platform so that uh, your organization or with the uh, industry based uh, there are number of cloud services over there so whatever the ideas to the life it can bring us to you okay okay so with the help of this uh, uh, we must say 100 more than 100 services uh, are able uh, to use it over there okay so everything from running your existing application by using virtual machines along with that you have to explore the new softwares uh, there are uh, different intelligent uh, services as well okay so many teams starts exploring the cloud by moving their existing application to the virtual machine okay so what it helps them so that turn in the as your it helps them so that they can easily migrate the existing application to the vm and it's a i must say it's just a good start to all of you guys so make sure when the uh, you when you are having this uh, complete things with you so make sure uh, you have you are able to create those uh, number of the uh, or uh, moving your applications from your machine to the virtual machine you can easily build up that okay 
so let's get started with the azure account okay but because to create and to use the Azure services, first of all, you have to understand what kind of the account that you want to use it over here. Just a minute. <clears throat> okay, so. What are the different types of the accounts that we have? So when you want to create any or you want to use any Azure service, make sure you have Azure account. OK, that is Microsoft account. So there are two different types of the accounts you can able to create. That is free account and free student account. OK, so these are the two here. Uh, if you are having a, a student uh, account, OK, or you are able to create that student account. So uh, at that time, uh, some number of the credit amount is uh, some number of the amount is credited. OK, our credits are going to be there okay, for that particular student account. And you are if it's a free account, it's also there. So that is I must say it's a two hundred dollars. And with the help of it, you can create uh, your own uh, resources on the cloud. So how it is going to be possible? Let me tell you on that. It's Azure Microsoft.com. OK, and here if you go and just check it on the sign in. OK. So here you have to mention OK, if you are not able to access, so you are, this is the signing process you have to complete. OK, as I have already uh, there. So this is the one way or how you can go with the uh, free account and all. So here try Azure for free and pay as you go. So these are the two, two options. So here again, I'll just share that link with all of you in the chat box so that you are able to Checked it. Yeah, definitely. I'll tell you about that part. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'll take up your questions, guys. OK, uh, just go with the sync. I'll definitely answer when the break is coming. OK. OK, so these are the two way. If I'll go with the free. So this is the sign up process that you have to complete. OK, so you have to sign up with the proper mail ID, but make sure it's a Microsoft paste. OK, if it is not there, you can create your own with the create one. OK, and uh, then you have to authenticate yourself. It means you have to use any proper devices. OK, if you want to go through the uh, mobile. OK, so that proper pin and everything is single sign on process is going to be there so that you can able to authenticate yourself and you can easily go and mention the credit details and you can get those particular credits for the one month. That is two hundred dollars. OK, so this is the way that you can create your free account. OK, so this is the one way now after that. There is a one more thing with the help of once you are uh, able to create your account with the help of Microsoft, you can easily get uh, there is a learn sandbox or there is a account dot uh, FS dot uh, that particular link is there. I'll definitely share that link with all of you. That is a learn path link. OK, so if you go and just check that is over here. OK. So there are self uh, get started with self directed learning and search for the training provider. This option is also going to be there. OK, so I just paste again that thing in the chat box. OK, so that you can able to get all the learning material over here. OK, so. 
for example for the first cloud concepts so what are the different cloud what is cloud computing what are the different benefits of it okay so complete overview over here okay so high availability okay then scalability vertical scaling and horizontal scaling as i have already mentioned okay so in this way and you have to do the learning process with the help of this okay so this is a learn sandbox or learn path link as i have uh, paste in the chat box okay now let's go and create an azure account okay uh, create a free azure account as i have already mentioned and we have to explore the learn sandbox by using the uh, navigating to the portal okay so now we'll come back over here that is we called it as a architectural components okay so what are the different architectural components we required for the physical setup so first of all the first thing if i'll go with the on premises or organization point of view i need a space correct so here on the cloud environment how i can get this space that space is actually a nothing but when we are talking about like can we create our own machine in the india region in the uh, us region in the usa region okay and where it is going to be there so there are more than 60 plus regions okay or more than that as i have already mentioned on the global part okay so there are more than 60 plus regions okay representing 140 countries so azure offers over all the globe okay this global regions okay other than the different cloud providers okay so what do you mean by region region is nothing but a geographical area Okay, which is made up of one or more data centers okay and make sure these data centers are closed enough okay within the proper premises okay so with the help of uh, this data center and region we can easily build our virtual machine and we are able to do if we are not building up the virtual machine, the Microsoft, we are using the past service. So virtual machine is automatically getting built up. Okay. We are just worrying about how to build an application. Where it is going to be built, again, you have to select the proper region. That's it. Okay. So region is a geographical area on the planet that contains at least one, okay, or multiple data centers nearby and make sure they are networked together okay so that you can easily able to get communicate within the instances okay so this is we called it as a region now there are different region pairs available like if i am talking about north central us having the a uh, one exact same pair in the south central us what is that region pair so make sure when two region, uh, okay, when we are having a one data center at the north central US, okay, and data center at the south central US, and how it is going to be paired up because of the replication policy. Okay, so make sure like when we are having any disaster happen, my second region is still available to me, how it is possible because of this regional pairs. Okay, so at least make sure they when we are talking about this region pairs, they are keep distance uh, over there at least 300 miles of the separation between these region pairs. Okay, and replication is automatically done. Okay, so it means what kind of the uh, uh, what we say the services that you are creating in the north uh, central US or east US. Okay, automatically replica is going to be keep it if you are mentioning the availability zone or availability set it automatically mentioned if you are having a storage accounts okay so that is again that replica is going to be there 
okay my one account is belongs to the one region automatically two replicas are maintained within the regional pair that is we called it as a replication strategy okay so we have to mention <coughs> over here what kind of the availability zone so that physically separated data centers within the azure regions that is we called it as a availability zone okay and each availability zone is made up of one or more data centers so for that we need those particular regional pairs okay now what do you mean by the software region okay so it is a uh, it is a one kind of the what we say the region where it is only uh, used by the government us government services only used for this particular things okay so uh, previous dates for china as well okay so china and us so these are the some compliance needs are there some securities are there okay <coughs> so these regions are highly securable along with that uh there are number of uh, agencies states and local governments okay so they are actually using those regions for their own sake of services okay and uh, make sure when we are having this uh, software region okay that that is we called it as a azure government okay so separate instance of that azure is going to be maintained and it is again highly securable make sure it is physically isolated okay from the non us government deployment so it, the replica kind of the thing is not over here okay so and it is accessible to only those who belongs to that uh, government sector okay so this is the we must say this is the sovereign region over here okay okay now again i am coming as i have already mentioned azure region is having availability zone what do you mean by availability zone somewhere okay somewhere i am creating my one machine okay in the one particular data center and as i have already mentioned there are the racks okay and if my any one of the rack is getting failure how it is going to be available to me okay so whenever there is a power failure okay so to provide the protection against the downtime it's still available to me okay uh, because of when that particular uh, exact that downtime exact that particular uh, zone is going to be not available or that virtual machine is not available within that zone okay what happened uh, we are uh, having the number of inquiries at the same time but still it is going to be a responded by the virtual machine but it is available in the another zone okay so available zo availability zones are physically separated data centers within an azure region and make sure each availability zone is made up of one or more data centers okay so they are having their own independent cooling and networking power uh, over there okay and uh, they have their own setup and isolation boundary for this okay so along with that the most important thing is that they are connected with the fiber optic network private fiber, uh, fiber optic network because of the to get connected through uh, fiber optic why because when one uh, of the machine or uh, which is available in the availability zone one and if it is getting down okay then automatically that request is going to be done and fulfilled by the from the availability zone two and make sure when they are going to be possible because of the high speed okay that's why I make sure that availability zones are connected through this fiber optic network okay <clears throat> so if you go and just check there is the i have already mentioned you about the global azure infrastructure okay so if you go and explore that globe okay so this is i am talking about azure globe infrastructure and if you go and click on any particular um, 
data center uh, region part okay so here they mentioned okay so if you go and just check like if you want to check the view like this okay or if you want to check the view like this okay <clears throat> And here they mention, okay, so these are the geographies, okay, so this is the geography like Brazil is there, okay. Then uh, these are the networking, okay, and uh, these are the ground stations, okay, and for the cooling purpose, okay, so everything is going to be a taken care by the okay so see this is the solar energy centers so that keep the power supply on and keep the getting power okay and uh, you go and just check for the i just want to check for the india part okay so it's a central us Over here, it's a central India, okay, and it's a south India. Two regions are there. Okay, go and just check. Okay, and it just started in 2015. <clears throat> And if you go and just check availability zone is there. So the nearest region, it means within 300 miles away. Okay. The next region is central India. What is this? Okay. So this is the. global infrastructure given by the Azure. Now, I'm coming to the next important point that how many different type of the Azure resources that we are able to create. We are able to create virtual machines, storage accounts, virtual networks, okay, functions, app services like what kind of the web applications, simple web applications, web applications along with the databases, okay? Along with the SQL databases, you are able to create. So these are the different uh, services and uh, they are acts as just resources or components, okay, uh, in the Azure. So Azure resources are this and now where we are able to create those resources. Now, to create those resources, first of all, we required uh, one particular container where we are keep those resources properly. So resource group is a uh, one container which is used to manage, okay, uh, and aggregate, I must say, what kind of the operations that we want to perform on those resources, okay. So we had to keep it in a one container, proper storage. That's why we need those resource group, okay. A resource group. If uh, my resource group belongs to East US and I am creating the resources from the West US, is it possible? So yes, it is possible, but it's good if you are creating your uh, resource group with the proper location, okay? But multiple resources from the different regions and I want to keep it in the uh, resource group which belongs to a proper, proper region. So yes, this is again possible. No worries about that. Okay, so how you can able to uh, mention in the resource group? So you can create the web app, okay? Any web app, any uh, uh, virtual machine, okay? And along with that, storage, okay? So you can keep it in one resource group or you can create different resource group and keep it in a different choice is yours, okay? So these are the... Uh, Number of the resources, you can keep it in a one resource group or as per your uh, resources, you can keep the resource group differently. Okay. 
Now resources can be moved. Please remember, if I am I am creating this web app along with the database, and I want to move this uh, web app to the uh, virtual machine resource group. Is it possible? So yes, it is possible. You can move the resources, okay, from one resource group to the other resource group, okay. So resource group is a logical container where you can keep your resources properly, okay. Now, what do you mean by Azure subscription? Okay, so it's just a, a understanding point of view, and uh, Azure subscription provides you an authenticated and authorized access to the Azure account. So please remember, if you have Azure account, so you have to purchase the subscription. Okay, for example, if you want to use the development subscription, testing subscription, or production subscription, whatever the subscription that you are purchased. After that, you are able to uh, create the resources, but make sure there is a billing boundary for it because your account is not a free account right now. It's getting subscribed. Okay. So automatically, you are having that particular authorization, you are having that particular authority to use and create the resources or services from the Microsoft Azure, but make sure it is going to be a billing counted one, okay? So automatically when we are talking about Azure subscription, it is nothing but the setting up the billing boundary for your account and authenticate yourself that you are a Microsoft user and you want to able to uh, create the or use the resources, okay, from the Microsoft Azure. On that cloud environment. Okay. So it generates a separate billing along with the reports. Okay. Invoices for each subscription. If your account is for development subscription account. Okay. So yes, you can able. Can I purchase more subscriptions? Yes, you can. So as your account is having more than one subscriptions. Yes, you can. And uh, which particular subscription that you want to use at the time of creating a resource that you have to select properly. Okay. Now, if you want to create any, uh, uh, what we say, uh, virtual machine, so it's a development subscription account. Okay. If you want to just test the web application, so test subscription is coming. Okay. Then if you want to use and deploy your web app, uh, on the containers level, okay. So at that time, it's a production subscription based, we must say. So that is, we called it as a, we had to set that particular billing boundary, okay, as per your own choice, okay. So definitely different and uh, separate billing reports and invoices are coming for each and every subscription, okay. Along with that, you can manage and access the control boundary of it as well. Okay, so which user is a part of your subscription? That is again, choice is yours. You can uh, get that subscription and distribute it. Okay, for example, if my organization having a subscription to uh, for the Azure, okay, so uh, how I become a part of it. So make sure like we are able to access that particular subscription, but make sure that pers particular person or that organization is uh, giving me that particular subscription access, then only I'm able to access that particular subscription or use that subscription, okay? So we have to make sure like Azure account itself having that access and control boundary, if you are an owner, so you can set that particular boundary so that which particular user can able to access that particular subscription and creating the resource within it, okay? So, what are the different management groups uh, that we have okay along on that basis subscriptions are divided for example in my organization suppose uh, production team is different development team is different testing team is different and they are uh, as per their own subscriptions okay the different resource groups are going to be created and they are able to create the resources as per the resource groups 
okay so these subscriptions are distributed within this particular team now this particular team use those subscriptions but as per their accounts make sure as per their accounts they are able to create the resources okay and finally you are getting the build properly so that particular person from the testing environment okay uh, testing these these virtual machines okay monitoring these these virtual machines everything is properly built up okay so that billing part is going to be there and to distribute that subscription management group okay that tree is really played a very vital role so if i am going to create a virtual machine from which resource group from which subscription it is under uh, it is under which management group okay so that we have to completely take care of automatically it's just billing that particular resource wise okay so this is a very important role of the management group over here <clears throat> So let's just check how to create a virtual machine and uh, can we monitor the resource group? So yes. So here what we'll do, we just take a 10 minutes break. Okay. And uh, then I'll be back and then we'll start with the. Yes, resource group is must for creating a service because it's a logical container. Okay. So without resource group i must say you are not able to access any particular resource because it's a logical container to hold the resources properly okay so that you are billing that tree that i have just shown you tree is going to be completed okay so guys we'll take a break for 10 minutes over here okay now it's a 12 40 so at 1250 will start with the practical approach. Okay. I'll show you and then we'll discuss about the storage account as well. Okay. So take a break for 10 minutes. I'll be back at 10, uh, sorry, 1250. Okay. In between, if you have any questions, kindly post it in the chat box. Thank you, guys.
Yes, good afternoon, everyone. I hope all of you are back. Okay, so let's get started for the practical. So I have already mentioned this sandbox link in the chat box as well. So how to create an Azure resource? Okay, so here, first of all, you have to start the puzzle and with the help of your details, like as I have already a Microsoft account, so I can able to create the uh, resource. Okay, with the help of portal as well. So I'll just show you. What is the portal link? OK, so this is the portal link portal dot azure dot com. OK, I'll just share that link in the chat box as well. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> OK. And once this uh, link is getting open, so here Microsoft Azure will ask you which account uh that you are linked up with the uh portal okay so i have already linked up my this account okay okay so this is the portal okay if you don't have any access for the OK, my screen is not in the sharing mode. Just a minute. Yeah, extremely sorry, guys. I thought my screen is in the sharing mode. Thanks for the confirmation. I hope now it's visible. You can give the thumbs up. Yeah, thank you. OK. So this is the portal that I am talking about. OK, and uh, how I can able to join it over here. I'll just repeat the steps so that all of you are getting the understanding. Okay. So here I'll just mention portal.azio.com over here and here from. If you have multiple accounts, you have to select the proper account. OK, where your subscription is actually getting attached. So I have that account with me. <coughs> so if you don't have your uh, subscription, so kindly just use this sandbox link. OK. Uh, I just want to show you the demo how we have to create the virtual machines or how number of the resources that we have. OK, so this is the uh, portal. A GUI based, uh, okay, and with the help of which you can easily able to create the number of the resources. What is the another way? So there is a PowerShell a Cloud Shell, and with the help of PowerShell script, you can easily able to create the uh, Azure resources as well. Okay, so make sure uh, if you are expert in the PowerShell script, uh, so you can easily use the AZ commands. OK, and uh, these commands are already there. OK, uh, with the help of how to create a virtual machine. So definitely I just want to show you. So in the Google, you have to just type Azure virtual machine. OK, and this is the very first link that is overview of virtual machine is coming. And if you go and just check, OK, if you want to create a Linux virtual machine with the help of CLI portal, OK, or PowerShell command. So I am using a portal way right now, but with the help of CLI. OK, so all the commands are there with the help of PowerShell script also see az commands are there okay so this is the link you can easily just get it the complete overview or the what are the different ways okay i'll share that link in the chat box okay 
so that you will be able to understand what is availability if you want to take a deep dive into it okay <clears throat> now i am just using a portal and if you go and just check this is the account that is linked okay i just want to show you the billing boundary okay where is billing boundary is coming so here you go and just check it's a switch directory okay and directory is nothing but a your identity access okay so it's a microsoft entra id right now previously it is active directory but right now it's a uh, we must say it's a microsoft entra id okay where your all identities and uh, your authentication and authorization process is going to be managed okay so if you are having that subscription then only able you are creating those resources okay so that directory id here you have to maintain okay and my directory name is this okay so if i just come sorry my directory name is this and i can create the another directory as well and we can switch between those directories i just want to show you the subscription details so in the search box you have to just type the subscription and you'll get the subscription details over here so right now i am having this subscription that is visual studio enterprise subscription okay and if you go and just check okay id is there what kind of the directory what is your role what it offers okay uh, it's authorized or unauthorized whether that subscription is active or not okay it is completely there okay and you can check the billing part as well so as i have already mentioned subscription having the billing boundaries okay so as i am not the owner of the subscription okay i am become a just over here a uh, one of the role is assigned okay so that role we have to understand that role in the governance part or in the microsoft entra id part where okay we are having different roles so if you are a owner then only you are able to get the billings okay external services and what are the different payment methods and the complete logs okay if you want to uh, put any kind of the settings events or everything is going to be there but make sure you are having the owner role okay i am right now having the contributor role okay so i am just able what is that contributor role i am able to create the virtual machines or i can able to create any particular resources that i want okay but i am not the owner of that subscription owner is a different person okay so i am coming back to how many different resources that we are able to create as i have already mentioned in the ppt itself okay that you are able to create yeah virtual machine storage account virtual network app services okay functions sql databases containers everything so here there are the two ways that you can find out the resources so the very first is a site menu okay so site menu is responsible for how to create a resource the, this is a one button and uh, along with that home dashboard and other services are there okay so in the favorites if you go and just check okay so sql databases function app service virtual machines storage accounts network everything is there okay and if you have no idea about this if it is in the continuously flying uh, in and out mode so don't worry you can use this search box and just type which resource that you want to create so i want to create a virtual machine okay so here is the virtual machine i already have one windows machine i, I just create a one more for all of you guys okay so how we will create so there is a one create 
button again and if you go and click over here so you can get more vms related solutions okay if you want to explore that part okay so what kind of the workloads that you have to decide along with that <clears throat> any preset configurations you have already decided that configuration for your machine so you can go with that part or you if you want to create a fresh virtual machine okay <clears throat> so select the first option after that this window is coming it mentions create a virtual machine and over here you have to the very first thing okay is subscription because without subscription you are not able to create any resource so you have to select that subscription by default if more than one are there then its list is going to be coming up i already have only one so i am using that only then someone asking me is resource group is really compulsory part so yes because without this container okay you are not logically put your particular resource in a proper location okay so make sure resource group is going to be there if it is not there okay so it's going to be a very critical task for you so make sure create if it is already there then no worries okay if it is not there you can create the resource group over here okay so just for your understanding i'll just mention see i already mentioned that i don't have any owner access i have contributor access my role is this okay in this particular subscription so if i want to able to create a resource group okay which is a container that holds the number of the resources okay so i don't have any permission to create a resource group under the subscription of this okay now i already have one so i'm using existing one only that is priyanka rg okay now after that instance details it means machine details that you have to mention so first of all we have to mention the machine name okay so here i just mentioned vm01 okay now region you have to select okay the very most and the cheaper one see as per the region you have to pay the cost this is again the very important point that you have to understand okay so if you are go and uh, create the resources in the central india in the south india just now they launched this okay so you have to pay more than uh than the east us because as compared to the other regions east us is going to be a very cheaper one so please remember region is going to be a very important again okay so cost perspective okay so the region is again played a very vital role now after that <clears throat> as i have already mentioned what is the availability high availability do you want to make sure like your uh, virtual machine is highly available to you if it is any downtime okay if amazon is going to be there if uh, uh, you are accessing a uh, flipkart service okay from the virtual machine so at that time make sure like this service is highly available to me how that this this particular organization thinks about that if uh, the discount is coming if any season festive season is coming it's still all the all the uh, uh, amazons uh, is going to be or uh, that shopping is still still is possible okay to all of you so how it is possible because of that high availability its traffic management is very 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 easy okay so that they can easily distribute the traffic and as i i have already mentioned scaling is again they are dependent high availability it means instances are going to be there it means scalability is going to be there okay if you are accessing the this particular uh, services from the different servers the servers are reliable to you okay so make sure this uh, applications web applications are highly available to you so how it is possible because of the database is going to be reliable in nature so that kind of the thing you have to make sure like think on that particular point of view okay so here as i have already mentioned availability options so there are availability zone 
virtual machine scale set or availability set. So virtual machine scale set, as I have not mentioned earlier, but it is again one of the uh, type we must say, uh, so that you can easily achieve the av high availability of the machine. Virtual machine scale set, it just distribute uh, the VMs across the zones, okay? And <clears throat> for domains at the scale, it means any power failure is going to be there, but still instance count is going to be more and more. If CPU usage is just for your sake of understanding, I'm telling you, if my CPU usage is more than 75, automatically another uh, machine is going to be created automatically. I'm not responsible for creating the another virtual machine. I'm not doing this task again and again. Once I just mentioned, like this is my virtual machine, it is under the virtual machine scale set. And if I decide that particular criteria, okay, so if that criteria is going to be like my CPU usage is more than 75% or please as your please bid, okay, another instance for me. Automatically that instance is going to be created and built up by the Azure itself. So you are not worrying about when the when your machine is having a very high load. Okay. So this is the way that virtual machine scale set is going to be work. Okay. So right now I'm just mentioning it just for your sake of understanding. I'm just, uh, it's a, just a simple practical demo. So I'm just giving you a no infrastructure redundancy required. Okay. And uh, here, is there any security type? Then question is coming. Is there any security type that you want to mention? Yes. Basic level security, I just want to mention. Okay. <clears throat> now, image image if you go and just check what kind of the configuration that we required okay so if you go in the overview okay so here if you go and just check what is the size of the virtual machine yeah it's a size and pricing okay a minute Okay, so VM sizes and series naming. So if you go and just check and explore that part. Okay, so these are the series and these are the sizes. <clears throat> okay, so if you go and just check as per the A family, B family, if you are at the entry level, okay, if you want to uh, design the system for the memory caching or any relational databases, Okay. At that time, we required what? We required very high amount of uh, memory, okay? Because it's a completely a database. So general purpose, compute optimized, memory optimized, okay? Storage optimized. Then uh, some of the time you required for gaming purpose, okay? Sometimes you required very high performance compute like in the organization. When we are having this, this type of the... Uh, what we say the machines okay so these are the, these are the different types or sizes we must say or families that we have to check okay and as per those particular sizes if i'll go with the just general purpose and if you go and just check for the overview okay so this is going to be a balanced cpu to memory ratio it means you can select any any particular family okay that is a family b family okay and if you go and just check their uh, storage capacity, okay, their uh, memory capacity, everything is going to be in a balanced nature. So we are not worrying about the, uh, what we say, if my extra traffic, if my uh, load is going to be a uh, heavy, okay. So at that time, I am aware, like I am, I just want to uh, create a simple virtual machine just for day one test purpose so at that time i'll go with the general purpose with the a family b family okay so here that thing you have to check okay and along with that for that particular type of the machine okay what type of the uh, operating system that you want if you want a 
uh, operating system from the marketplace. So Azure is giving you this marketplace. Okay, so you can select the Windows Server. You can create a virtual machine with a as a Windows Server. Basically, you are building Windows Server. Creating a virtual machine with Windows 11, Ubuntu based, okay. Microsoft Windows 10 based, Red Hat Linux, Linux based machine, okay. So, which particular type of the virtual machine that you want, okay. So, that particular image you want to select, okay. Just come back. I already have. So I have to restart it again. So here I'll just mention the name of the machine. Select the region. By default, East US is coming. If you want to change to West US or any different one, you can change it. Then availability zone instead of I'll go with the no infrastructure. Okay. And for the image, which windows? See, these are all the existing images. Okay. So I just want the Windows server for uh hot patch okay and now after that architecture is x64 then uh, okay there is a spot discount as well so that you can get if you want to get any particular discount it's mean it means like uh it's really helpful when uh, you want to uh make a copies of that particular uh, virtual machine at that time it really helps you with the spot discount then size as i have already mentioned it's a a size b size okay if you go and just check and see all sizes okay so here it's coming so this is a general purpose size now if i will go with the ds1 b2 one cpu is going to be there 3.5 ram is going to be there Data disk is four, maximum uh, input output operations. Okay, so everything, everything is going to be there. So if you want to group it by series or non grouped it, like, okay, so all these series are there. I just go with the just day and purpose thing, day and test purpose thing. So I select only this one. Okay, and if you go and select it, immediately the cost is coming. Okay, so what is the cost? It's a 4,187 rupees per month. Okay, per month, please mention. So that's why if your virtual machine is completely done, you are using it for your own purpose, deploying your application, everything is done, delete that resource. Otherwise, you have to explicitly pay for this much amount. Okay. Now, for the authorization, here you have to mention the username. So here I'll just mention Azure VM. Okay, and mention the password. Okay. I'll just mention the simple one. Now. Now the networking part is coming. Okay, so here we have to select the virtual machine network ports. So which pu public port that you want to allow? Now see, we are in my, uh, we are in uh, doing these things from the portal, correct? So from our machine, we want to get connect with the other virtual machine. Okay, how it is getting possible? So for that purpose, there is a one protocol that is RDP remote desktop protocol, which helps you a lot to get connect with the uh, what we say to the virtual machine. I know it's not a uh, what we say the secure way, okay? But just for understanding purpose, I am using this. If we want to get it more secure, so there is a Azure Bastion, okay? So this is one of the service Azure Bastion. So that you can securely use the remote desktop protocol. Okay. So that you can securely access the virtual machine machine from your machine. Okay. So make sure 
right now i'm not mentioning any bastion kind of the thing but i'm just using this rdp now along with that if you want to get connect uh, for the portal okay uh, browser site okay uh, for the browsing kind of the thing at okay then uh, 443 and from the linux point of view it, it will give gives you the ssh okay that is 22 so make sure these ports are going to be there then you are able to connect from the Linux or from the Windows machine. I am uh, having Windows machine right now onto my machine. So I will use the RDP. Okay. Then after that, we have to select the disk. Okay. So what is the disk type that we have to mention? So here I'll just go with the image as a default. And what is the disk size? I have to just keep it as it is. That is a minimum 127 and uh, os disk type okay so here please remember as i have mentioned it's a replication strategy come into the picture okay if i'll go with the data center and it's a locally redundant so we have to choose this uh, premium standard and standard hdd okay so if i'll choose any one of it like standard ssd okay it means Okay, that my one machine is located in one data center and in within that data center, I have three different SSDs are present. Or th sorry, three different machines are present. So like this kind of the locally redundant storage for storage point of view, it, it, it comes into that kind of the picture. Okay, now please stick uh, when we don't want that VM, it's delete with VM. Uh, it's going to be a completely there. It's very, very important. Okay. Just a minute. Yeah. So uh, then. Okay. So this is the way uh, that we have to select the hard disk type. Okay. Oh, sorry. OS disk type. And after that. Make sure all this configuration is getting deleted. Make sure delete with VM. It means all the configuration is getting deleted when we are deleting the VM. Okay. So we explicitly we have to take care of that. And that's why tick over here. For the key management, we are not worrying. It's a platform managed key. It means Microsoft will take care of. So we are not worrying about that part. Now, after that, the next part is coming to the picture that is networking. Okay, if uh, go and just remember that shared responsibility model, so you will understand network control is going to be is in our hand. Okay, so we are able to create the network. So what I'll do, I'll create a new network. I'll just mention it's a VM. VNet one. Okay, so I'm explicitly creating this virtual network. Along with that, when we are talking about virtual network, okay, so virtual network is actually uh, gives you the service that is a networking service so that number of the Azure resources are unable to get communicate with each other because of this virtual network. Okay, so this is we called it as a, <coughs> a one particular. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a one particular network, just like a, it's exactly copy of the infrastructure network. We have to mention the address range. We have to make sure there are the subnets that logical groupings are there. Okay. Make sure they are not overlap with each other. Okay. So then only they are able to get communicate. Okay. What are the resources which, which are available in the virtual network? So make sure they are. Uh, in a proper subnet or that particular virtual network and they are not having the same addresses or overlapping addresses. Okay, so this is the address space that we have to mention. Okay, so suppose I'll just go with this. Okay, so starting range is going to be a from 16. Okay, and if you go and just delete it, I just want to delete it and want to create it explicitly. Wait a minute. 
So by default, manage subnet configuration. I just go and create it over here. Okay, and see if you want to create a one subnet. Okay, so see the range starts from 16. Okay, and 16 to 29. Okay, so it means if I'll go with the 16, 65,536 addresses are still available so that this this much number of the subnets you can get create over here. But if you go and go a little bit up till to the 29 maximum eight addresses I mean maximum eight subnets you can able to create. OK, so this is the way that we can. <coughs> create the subnets, so I'm not going inside that coming back to the virtual machine. Creating the new virtual network, OK, and uh, naming the virtual network as VNet01. And here default, it's a subnet 01, OK, and keep the address range as it is. <coughs> and click on OK. OK, now whenever we are creating this. Virtual machine. OK, so make sure there is a very important term come into the picture that is virtual. Sorry, network interface card. OK. So because of this. You can easily. Route the traffic, OK, and uh, it comes under the network security group, OK? So network security group is nothing but just acts like a firewall. So which traffic is allowed and which traffic is denied? So there are security rules that you have to follow and uh, on those uh, rules, OK? Uh, which is getting attached with the network interface card as we are make sure like networking is there. So network interface card is going to be a very important because without it, your networking is not possible. OK, so this is there and what is network security group? OK, it is there over here. So make sure there is a one subnet network security group can be based on the subnet or in based on the network security card as well. So right now I'll just go with the basic one. And which public inbound port that I want to allow from uh, virtual machine. So I'll select it as a RDP inbound port. OK, it means I'll just this will allow all the IP addresses to access your virtual machine. OK, now after that. In the management, I don't want to go inside and check that for it for the management perspective. OK, I'll just keep it as it is other things. OK, for the monitoring, keep it as it is advanced, keep it as it is. Now the tags. OK, so tags are name value pairs and why we are using it. So at the time of billing perspective, OK, make sure which particular uh, uh, tags are going to be mostly used for that particular uh, subscription and within that particular account. OK, so make sure you have to use that. Name value pair. Okay. So it just categorize the resources properly at the time of billing. That's why tags are going to be used. It's an optional. It's not compulsory. Now we had to wait for running the final validations and if you go and just check, I'm just using the standard simple basic uh, virtual machine configuration. And if you go and just checked it, this much amount I have to pay 5 rupees, 5.7358 INR, okay, rupees per hour, okay? 
now can we uh, check for the other vms as well so yes we can check it so this is the pricing solutions uh, we must say okay so given by the uh, azure so we can check and request for the pricing code okay so here we have to select the operating system category series region okay <laughs> everything is going to be there currency month okay and which pricing model that you want to compare so everything is going to be there and you will get the complete details and like this for this kind of the series you are paying this much amount in the dollar and all okay i'll just go with the rupees okay so if you go and just check for the b2 instance 174 rupees per month 699 rupees per month so this much amount that you have to pay so this is the pricing calculator given by the azure now by creating the subnet we get ip address uh address range is defined by the virtual network first of all and with the help of subnet uh we are actually creating the isolated packages or we are we must say we are uh, dividing that range in a different different uh isolated chunks okay so now with the help of this subnet we are defining this number of the virtual machines okay so within the virtual network subnets are logical distribution of that address space we must say okay so you can logically create the spaces within the uh, within the network within that network range okay so cidr really helps you with the help of cidr uh that is classless inter domain range is going to be there or uh, so cidr something xyz let me check our cidr dot xyz yeah. this is the one of the site okay and you can easily understand with the help of this notation as you are use this cidr notation okay and uh, with the help of this cidr you can easily divide out this configuration okay so it's a classless inter domain routing okay so please remember and uh, if i go how many number of the counts that we are getting it over here okay so if i go with the simple 192 point as per our uh, local machines we are mostly using this So like, if I mention over here ten, so it is not allowed. Okay, so make sure from the sixteen. Okay, in the Azure. Okay, so first usable IP is this, and the last usable IP is this. And how many different count of the machines we get? So sixty-five thousand. so basically they are starts with this range and they ends up at 29 why because four addresses is uh yeah first two and the last four five addresses occupied by the uh azure itself for the maintenance okay so the very first is going to be a 9 and the, after that it's 14 so it means only eight count is going to be there uh, from the eight five is occupied by the azure itself so max to max three is going to be there now if i go and check it to the 30 so it's four which is not valid for the azure because azure itself requires five machines correct five ip addresses and it is not possible that's why 30 beyond 29 you are not able to give this kind of the address space range okay for the subnet so that's why at the time of creating the subnet you have to explicitly mention the range from 16 to 29 and there is another concept as well if i'll go and explain you it takes a whole day but uh, it's a 
at the associate level if you go and take a deep dive okay for the networking part you'll uh, uh, really able to understand uh, like ipv4 ipv6 okay that complete part is going to be there but yes due to time limitations we are just covering first the practical and then definitely if time allows i'll definitely cover that part as well so once the validations are passed it means my basic details the disk networking management monitoring advance okay all the details are filled successfully and we'll get the complete pricing details over here that we have to pay 5.73 rupees per hour okay and if you are okay so click on the create and now deployment is started and azure is deploying the virtual machine okay that is c initializing deployment it means we are already discussed about the physical infrastructure the architectural component region data center okay uh, where it is going to be created how it is highly available so everything is going to be come now come into the picture and it starts working that your machine is going to be ready okay now once that deployment is completed we'll get back to it and check it how it is getting connected from my machine to that virtual machine okay so it takes some time takes few seconds over there in between i'll come back to the ppt so let me check uh, are we done with the exercise yeah okay now i'll come and starts with the networking topics as i have already mentioned what are the different compute services so virtual machine app service container instances okay so these are when we are uh, talking about this services that we want or on demand service okay we are actually talking about the computing the resources that is all about disk processors memory networking and operating system okay so at that time we have to take care of that disk part processor part memory part networking part and operating system definition okay or taking up which particular operating system that we want to on that vm okay so these are the compute service so vms as i have already mentioned right now we are creating those vms over here okay so it includes uh, processor memory storage networking okay so our service offering you to use and customize your virtual machine okay now vm scale set now scale set as i have already mentioned if my machine is having a heavy traffic how can i uh, distribute the load and for that purpose load balancer is come into the picture and load balancer is a uh, uh, one of the uh, what we say a uh, a uh, uh, one particular solution to distribute the traffic over the network okay so when you are machine in the networking and you want have that heavy traffic at that time automatically scaling okay automatically vertical scaling is happened how it is possible okay so to scale up in a automated mode and create the same instance of the virtual machine okay automatically that is we called it as a vm scale set or virtual machine scale set okay so there are the two terms scale out and scale in scale out means when there is a heavy traffic and your resource needs to be in increase it means you want to get one more resource one more vm ready that is scale out okay now my cpu virtual machine cpu is heavy and traffic is coming and after that another instance is going to be ready scale in when the resource need are lower it means my traffic is becoming low and now my virtual machine cpu usage is going to be a lower than 30% automatically existing instances are automatically deleted we are not worrying about deletion part or addition part 
everything is taken care by the azure itself but make sure you have to keep your v, uh, vm in the vm scale set then only this part is going to be there now availability set as i have already mentioned there are number of the racks and make sure your machine is highly available how it is possible so there are the fault domains okay racks uh, available so for the fault domains it means there are power supply is there okay uh, cooling supply is there network supply is there and suppose any one of the rack is getting failed so at that time still your machine is available from the rack 2 okay so at that time if fault domain if this machine is comes under the fault domain 0 so this update domain ud ud okay update domain 1 and update domain 4 are also not working because they are in this particular rack okay that's why so at that time make sure if this this picture is coming it means power failure is there any disaster is going to be happen at that time make sure another fault domains are still in a working mode and from that track you can easily get that vm details okay so this is the way that you can put your virtual machines okay now uh, yeah virtual machine we have already created what is virtual desktop okay so let me check first of all whether your uh, virtual machine is ready or not then i'll come back to that point so yes your deployment is complete and uh, we have to go to that resource so once it is completed it means now your vm is ready and if you go and just check in the overview part resource group name is this your machine status is running it is located in east us okay operating system is windows and uh, size is this and public ip is this now see i have already mentioned rdp port okay uh, available it means by using this public ip we can able to connect to the virtual machine okay so there are two ips public ip and private ip private ip it means we are not able to connect with that virtual machine because it is privately for that particular uh, virtual machine when we are using this private ip when two resources are getting communicate with each other at that time private ips are used public ip it means it is exposed to the internet it means from the my machine i am able to get connect with the virtual machine so we have to copy that okay and in the networking i am just telling you about the network setting as well okay so see as i have already mentioned when virtual machine is getting created your nic is automatically getting created so your nic name is this okay you go and just check this is the network interface configuration ip configuration okay so this is your network interface card okay then after that this is the network security group okay and here it acts as a just like a firewall so that you can control on uh, control the traffic okay you can secure the traffic okay so here you have to mention the inbound rules and outbound rules inbound rule means which traffic is incoming on that particular uh, virtual machine so that you can take care of that so right now rdp is there it is allowed okay it means from any source any destination we are getting connect with that particular machine and outbound means like from one from uh, your virtual machine can you able to send the traffic to the others so that is 
going to be a outbound okay now coming back to the overview again network interface as i have already mentioned and subnet is going to be a there okay why subnets are not there i am in the nsg that's why coming back to the overview okay so let's get connect with the help of this public ip address let's get connect with the virtual machine now from the your machine you have to mention the remote desktop connection okay so you have to use this remote desktop connection here you have to put the public ip of your virtual machine click on the connect okay and see at the time of configuration and uh, at the time of creating the virtual machine we are uh, mentioning the username and password that same name and password here we have to mention so there i am using azure vm and password is this and now if i click on okay so it's getting connected but it because before that it just come one message okay so do you want to connect so yes when i click on yes now we are able to get connected to the vm and see the complete vm is ready and this is the same as your vm whatever the specifications that we have already mentioned <clears throat> it just take one minute so be with me Okay, guys. So now my VM is ready. Okay, and I am able to get connect to the VM. Now here, you can do. and create your own applications okay so this is going to be a really very uh <clears throat> easy way portal is going to be a really uh, helps you a lot to get and create your own resources but make sure entering the proper values proper names passwords is very very important now there are other properties if you want to delete that machine you can delete okay if you want to stop that machine so you can get stop you want to restart that machine you can get restart it okay so the other option see i have already mentioned by using public address and through the rdp it's not a secure way what is the another way so you can connect via bastion as i have already mentioned that azure bastion is one of the service so that you can secure the rdp and get connect with the virtual machine so this is the another way we can get connect with the virtual machine as well now at uh, time is very less so i have to co cover the other modules so i'll come back to this okay and uh, i hope you Uh, when you have received any or get any subscription please do the practice okay now i am coming back to the uh, desktop what is azure virtual desktop so it is a kind of the desktop 
okay just like uh, uh, into our machine if we are having any one particular uh, desktop service or any particular app virtualization is going to be possible with that app so that is going to be a uh, another thing okay from our machine we can get connect but virtual desktop is a kind of a desktop okay so that uh, uh, which is going to be runs in the cloud environment so that complete uh, your uh, what we say the virtualizing environment is available but make sure there is no need to add uh, the any private or some different kind of the scenarios over here so you have to run additional get, uh, gateway servers over here how it is possible like from the organizational point of view if we have that particular uh, desktop uh, along with us okay uh, in the organization and i want to create it in a cloud environment how we how we can do it so with the help of azure virtual desktop you can get that exact organization or on premises environment uh, uh, over here okay so that is the way okay you can achieve the uh, get and access those particular things from the organization okay with the azure virtual desktop so this is the <coughs> one of the service again after that there are another services that are like uh, kubernetes and container so azure container service is again one of the more popular service uh, used by most of the organization how it is going to be used so here uh, if we want to uh, make if you are aware about the docker concept so it's it is going to be uh, really helpful over here so that you can uh, what we say create the number of the container instances we can load the balances and scale up the uh, number of the applications over here okay so azure container gives you the complete again virtualized environment again a lightweight environment okay so that we can easily build up the application and make the copies of it okay so here no need of operating system okay only what particular changes that we want only the those particular changes that we can able to use it so azure container it was what do you mean by azure container instances so this is this is again uh, we must say when we want to create any web application okay here i just want to show you on the portal itself if you go and just check on the home okay so it's a azure container app okay. it comes under app service so you can so container apps <coughs> container registries are there by container so container apps okay so if you want to create this container apps okay so it means like whatever the web application that you have you have to containerize it instead of docker you are now containerize it on the cloud with the help of uh, this you can able uh, with the help of this container app you can able to get create the container image okay or if you want to go and mention the any source code or artifact over there you can use it okay so this is the one of the way what is the deployment source that you are able to mention over here accordingly you can containerize your application okay so this is the one of the way guys and 
to containerize the solution okay or to containerize the application you have to use this container app okay that is azure container apps okay another part is container registry so just like a docker okay just like a docker if you are aware about the docker and then only you are able to understand just like a docker we are having uh, multiple applications and with the help of docker file we are mentioning uh, just the complete uh, what we say what my application is what kind of the my application uh, configuration that we need and uh, we have to create the exact image okay and then at any particular machine we can easily get and deploy that particular uh, <clears throat> application without worrying about whether that machine is having uh, all the configurations or not because i am having those configuration along with me within that particular docker file okay so that image really supports me that container really supports me over here the same number of the uh, images you can store okay so here you are storing those kind of the docker images so here container registries are going to be take care of that okay so that is we called it as a container registry okay so that you can easily uh, uh manage build okay what different number of the web applications that you want kubernetes service is just an orchestration service we must say for the containers okay and uh, when we have the large volumes of the containers at that time we are to orchestrate it and uh, with the help of this azure kubernetes service we can uh, again orchestrate it on the cloud environment okay so first of all you have to understand what is kubernetes then only you can able to use the azure kubernetes service so this is one of the service provided by the azure now after that azure functions as i have already mentioned it's again uh, one of the service and uh, this uh, type of the resource that we can uh, create so what it kind of the service is it's a pass service uh, make sure it is a serverless compute operations so whatever the event based uh, code that we have and when we want it uh, without any uh, server uh, infrastructure and we want to execute it okay so at that time we have to go with the azure function option okay so these are the different compute options that we have virtual desktop containers virtual machines now if i'll go and explain you in a short and uh, simple language so virtual machines are uh, a complete package we must say and uh, we are actually understanding how it is going to be how that resource is going to be created instead of that if we want a uh, one particular dedicated application which is getting connected and use it at that time we are using virtual desktop and now i want my application uh, uh and make sure that and why i'm not worrying about the complete environment and uh, what we say the uh, complete infrastructure at that time i'll go with the container option okay so that <clears throat> if i want to in a orchestrated mode i'll go with the kubernetes option as well so this is the way that uh, we are comparing this compute options so virtual machine is there desktop is there and if it both are not required we are containerize it with the help of azure container service as well okay now after that there is again one more service that is azure app service what is this azure app service so it is again a uh pass service platform as a service so that you can easily create your web application simple web application web application with the databases okay you can select your which particular language that you want to design uh, that application so you can get that particular type of the language over here as well so here if i just mention app services 
okay so see these are the four options we are getting i'm just go and create the simple way back just want to show you that you can able to code it and getting it from the container okay or you can directly get the static way back over here what type of the runtime environment that you have to mention so language part is very very important so if you go and just check uh, .NET is there, Java is there, and uh, PHP along with the Python is also there. But make sure if I'll choose the Java, okay. So Linux and Windows both the virtual uh, both the operating systems are getting supported. But if I'll go and select the Python, okay. So make sure this type of the code and this type of the web application. Okay, and uh, along with the Python based web application, it's only allowed in Linux operating system. Okay, so Windows are not supporting to this particular uh, at the time of here only uh, here in Azure cloud environment, I'm telling you. So at the time of creating a web app, <coughs> which is a Python based or Python coded one. Okay, so at that time only Linux operating is a Linux operating system is supported. Okay, so in this way you can able to create your uh, web app as well. Okay, uh, again, deployment, networking, every every part is now come into the picture. Okay, but we have to just mention like whether it is publicly available or not. Okay, so that's it. Okay. But if you go and just check, we are not mentioning any virtual machine name. We are not mentioning any uh, virtual network details. Okay, so that part is taken care by the Microsoft itself or Azure itself. Okay, so this is the way that we can able to create the web app, and that's why it is called it as a pass service. Okay, <clears throat> now. As I have already mentioned, Azure Virtual Network, that is VNet. Okay, this is again one of the service. You can explicitly create only virtual network by yourself. If you want to create a simple virtual network, so yes, you can create. This is again one of the service. Okay. So previously I have already uh, created my one win uh, Windows VM at that time I'm creating the VNet. Okay. And at the time of second VM 01, I'll creating this VNet 01. Okay. Can I create without virtual machine? Can I create a virtual network? Yes, you can. Okay. Now at that time here, how many different uh, components or terminologies are there so in the virtual network we have to explicitly mention the name so suppose this is my v802 mention the region okay mention the region subscription and resource group then name and region okay after that do you want any azure bastion service do you want any azure firewall service do you, uh, do you want any DDoS network protection? Everything, encryption, everything is mentioned. I didn't mention anything. Now, address space part is come into the picture. Okay. So here, when we want to configure the virtual network, explicitly we have to mention the address space. Azure, uh, currently, uh, till now, Azure only follows IPv4 address space. Okay. If you want to, change it okay so it is possible that you can able to change that space okay but make sure you are actually able to understand what space that you are talking about okay so that kind of the space is only allowed okay and that is a prefix uh, values over there we must say and see, I have already uh, same address space for the 
uh, win vm vnet as well okay so it already mentioned this address uh, overlaps with the existing virtual network so we have to change it okay So now it is not overlapping. Okay. So see if it is, I mentioned one, this is also overlap with the VNet 101. Now I'll mention two. Okay. So the choice is yours. You can give as many number of the uh, address space, but make sure it's a class A, class B, class C, this kind of the things we have to first of all understand and then accordingly you have to put the values and that range over there okay along with that can we add the subnet multiple subnets are getting supported by the virtual network it's not compulsory vnet is having only one virtual one subnet no we can put as many number of the subnets that we want okay by one by default there is a one subnet that is default if you want to edit it there is a edit option coming and you want to change the name so yes you can change the name okay what is the type of that subnet again the choice is yours so it's a azure bastion subnet firewall subnet okay gateway subnet okay uh, route server subnet you can select if i want to implement the azure bastion service so make sure at that time this subnet is a azure bastion subnet okay and at that time i didn't want mention any explicit name by default it takes that name but if i mention default okay so now i can able to change the name over here okay now do you want any network security group do you want any uh, uh, route the traffic so right now i'm just keep it as it is okay so what is service endpoint so that you can able to get connect with the other services that is service endpoint okay so from one uh, resource you can able to get connect with the azure resource another azure resource for that purpose service endpoints are there okay any delegations any policy that you want to mention right now there is no need just saved it okay next you have to delete this address space we don't want this address space at all this address space also we don't want okay now mention the tags use the same that we are using it in a previously click on the next checking up all the validations whether you are entering the correct data or not once the validations are passed click on the create and now your virtual network is ready okay so it is under the deployment i'll come back to this particular point okay so as i have already mentioned yeah so there are the different networking services okay we will definitely access it with the http as well so first of all we have to go and connect with the virtual machine and open the port 80 as well but we are don't open the po click on the port 80 that's why we are not able to access the browser uh, the same uh, web applications which are available on the virtual machines we are not able to access it from the our browser okay so make sure for that purpose we have to use the http and configure this access port 80 and enable it then only we can do it okay what is vpn gateway vpn gateway is used to send the encrypted traffic between the virtual network as your virtual network okay and make sure it is going to be a uh, done over the public internet okay and uh, it is for the on premises location as well it means what i'll just give you one simple example okay now suppose this is my virtual machine <laughs> okay 
okay so i am a on premises user so this is the waste us region everything is getting attached this is the security rule and here we have to mention the subnet as well okay so here we have to explicitly mention the gateway okay so this gateway allows me to keep the traffic sending okay from my virtual machine to the on premises or vice versa from on premises to the virtual machine okay so it is not directly possible and that's why vpn is come into the picture so with the help of vpn gateway that is virtual private network gateway vpn gateway okay so with the help of private ip address we are now able to get connect from our work organization okay to this cloud environment okay so this is we called it as a vpn gateway as a, it, why it is going to be used just for security point of view so that you can get the secure communication possible okay now there is a third party also uh, so that if we want any uh, communication possible from the customers network to the microsoft edge okay at that time we have to secure it and make sure that connection is more secure and it's a private connection over the azure so at that time we have to take care of which particular service that you want to use and it is going to be a fast as well okay so at that time express route is going to be a one of the solution with the help of we can easily able to get connect from our network to the microsoft edge okay uh, to that particular uh, microsoft network okay so that you can able to access the multiple cloud applications okay if we want to create the resource if we want to use the outlook use the microsoft 365 okay but there is a third party installer so it's not a vpn gateway there is a third party installer and with the help of it we can easily uh, get connect with the on premises network from uh, azure environment okay now after that azure dns is coming so what do you mean by dns that is domain name system and this is one of the service again if we are having this type of the ips every time okay so my resource is ready i just want to show you that ip is there okay so this is the address space okay and now if i go and just check for the vms Okay, that is VM zero one. Okay, so see here also it is not configured. You can configure that DS DNS name. It means you can give the proper name to your machine instead of this IP address with the help of like we are mentioning www dot google dot com. So it just a one of the IP. Okay, but google.com is a proper dns name now with the help of this you can azure dns service okay with the help of private dns zone you can uh, use that uh, service okay and uh, give the proper name okay so which is going to be a uh, considered as a fully customized uh, domain name 
ओके और फुल्ली क्वालिफाइड डोमेन नेम डोमेन नेम दैट इज एफ क्यू डी एन ओके सो मेक श्योर विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस डी एन एस सर्विस यू कैन एबल टू गेट कनेक्ट विद द proper name to the vm this is the one of the way now after that uh storage service okay so when we are talking about storage account first of all storage account is not for the database so here we are not talking about the database when we want to store any binary file any file type of the data any messaging type of the data queue type of the data so at that time how that storage account like we are we want to uh, save our text files images audios videos okay so where we are actually using uh, this and storing this on the cloud environment so at that time storage account come into the picture okay so that we uh, this uh one of, this is one of the service which is provide over the internet okay and uh, uh there is a redundancy option if my uh, uh storage account is getting failed because of the region failure okay if my uh, in my particular region if flood is going to be there and because of that data centers are completely destroyed at that time how can i uh, assure like my uh, storage account is going to be still over there so at that time redundancy option is coming and it is divided into four uh, different categories first one is a locally redundant okay zone redundant geography redundant okay geo redundant we must say geo reason uh, redundant and uh, uh, read access geo redundant okay so these are the storage redundancy options that we have and uh, when we are talking about locally redundant uh, storage okay it means single data center in the primary uh, region and what is the durability it's a 11 nines that 9.999 that is no sorry 99.999 like this per this much percent that we are getting the data back okay and it is a durable in nature now whenever we are talking about zone redundant storage okay so it means same copy of the storage keep it in three different zones okay or three replicas in uh, three different zones multiple replicas but within one data center that is lrs then grs one is in the uh, sorry uh, storage account is here and their replica is in the primary region now by chance if primary regions fail okay or any disaster is going to be happen automatically it sync with the a uh, sync with the uh, in a asynchronous way the secondary copy is maintained and uh, we'll get the data back from the secondary Uh, region okay so the two regions are going to be there uh, primary and secondary and make sure these two regions are far away from third 300 miles okay it means they are in the regional pair then only you are get and able to access that particular data now uh what do you mean by read access so only readable accessibility is there if any data loss is going to be happen so at that time secondary from the secondary region we are able to get that data back okay so this is the read access so read access is actually given to the secondary separate uh, secondary separate point okay so this is the we uh, way we called it as a storage redundancy but in that storage how we can store the data so if we want to store the data like uh, text binary data okay any unstructured uh, uh, data so at that time in a massive amount of unstructured data okay uh, or a massive amount of binary data text data for that purpose we have to go with the azure block okay another option is azure disk so can we provide the disk for a uh, virtual machine so yes 
at the time of creating the virtual machine we have already mentioned the disk okay so this is the another disk and here azure disk is going to be a different but we can attach this azure disk with the vm as well okay and you can use this disk over there okay queue so for the message storage service at that time retrieval for the large amount of the message we have to go with the azure queue now the very popular services are azure blob and azure files okay so files are going to be a like any uh, any uh, particular file options okay when we want to uh, share it or uh, it that can be accessed using uh, server message block protocol okay so when we want to set up a network file and uh, at that time make sure that files are uh, very secured okay uh, so at that time we had to go with the azure file option okay now after that azure tables as i have already mentioned structured data is not a part of azure storage so here uh, what do you mean by then azure table so it provides you a key or attribute option for structured uh, non relational data storage okay which is we must say it's a schema based design okay now oh, sorry schema less design okay so we didn't want any kind of the uh, relational database over here i'm talking about i'm talking about simple uh, key attribute option is going to be there so that you can able to get the data and store the data in the azure tables okay so the very popular store uh, endpoints uh, for these all these are uh, mentioned over here okay i'll definitely show you but uh, before that i just want to tell you about the access tiers so there are total four access tiers like uh, when i just want to simply tell you about over here like uh, everyone is having uh, awareness about the netflix and uh, the mostly visited sites okay so uh, suppose i am using a netflix and i want to watch a movie which is recently uh, <clears throat> popular now okay so i'll keep it that movie in a hot tier because it is frequently accessible and it's a very popular one so everyone is watching that movie or uh, checking that movie so i'll keep that movie in a hot tier that is we called it as a frequently accessible access accessible so when data is uh, frequently accessible we have to keep that data in a hot tier okay after that after few uh, months okay uh, still the popularity is there but uh, the other popular picture is again our movie is again coming at that time we will keep that uh, first movie in the cool tier because it is infrequently accessed okay or after few years it is infrequently accessed so at that time i'll keep it inside the cool tier okay what do you mean by cold tier so when that movie is no longer or uh, more than after one years if that movie uh, someone is watching at that time i'll keep it inside the cold tier okay now make sure it is still accessible for 90 days at least for 90 days and for cool tier at least stored for at least 30 days okay now once the movie uh, after the one year that popularity is not really very high okay so now what i'll do after few years i'll just skip its uh, track okay uh, not getting deleted but change the tier from cold to archive or from hot to archive okay like can i change the tier yes you can okay so at the time of creating the storage by default hot tier is coming but if you want to change the tier so yes you can change the tier after creating the storage account as well okay and here i just want to tell you on the reading uh, accessibility okay you have to pay the cost for the storage account 
Now, when that movie is very popular, it is located in the hot tier, and that time it is frequently accessed. Correct. That's why we had to keep that movie in the hot tier. But its reading is frequently happening, so its reading operation is very high. So you had to pay for that. Okay. So these are the tiers. Okay. Can we create a storage blob account? So I'll definitely tell you about that part, and I'll stop it over here. Okay. And uh, just want to tell you in the third module what the other topics that we have in the third module. As uh, we have only last ten minutes left, so I'll just recall you those topics. As I have already mentioned, it's a completely management and governance uh, module. Okay, so what type of the resources that you are creating? How much? that you are consuming okay and what kind of the maintenance okay so here pricing calculator i have already mentioned okay and yeah total cost ownership it means if you want to convert your infrastructure okay uh, and uh, shift your infrastructure to the Wait a minute. To the cloud environment, at that time, how much cost that you have to pay? Okay, so this is a total cost ownership calculator. We must say. Okay, so you have to define your workloads, adjust your assumptions, and you can get the report. You can get the report. You can save it. You have to first of all sign it. Uh, if you want to bulk the upload, yes, you can do it. Okay, but to define the workload. Every every detailing you have to mention it over here. What type of the license, servers, operating systems, how much RAM, uh, how uh, what kind of the optimization? It's a CPU or memory based. Okay, so everything you have to mention. Then if you need any databases, okay, if you want any storage account, if you want any networking part, once you mentioned it. Okay, and may I click it? So here you can get the complete report. So what is the database cost? Okay, what is the software cost? What is the electricity cost? Everything is mentioned. Okay, and after, finally you are getting this much amount over here in the calculator. That means from uh, on premises when you are moving towards the Microsoft Azure. OK, so overall five years you have to pay this. So this is with the Microsoft Azure. You can estimate the cost and you can get the understanding the things. OK, so. What type of the estimations that you want to uh understand okay at the time of migrating the things from on premises uh, or from infrastructure to the azure infrastructure okay so this is one of the calculator we must say so i'll just paste it in the chat box so that all of you are able to get it uh, someone is asking it's a storage service. Uh, yeah, it's a storage service. The storage account, how we can create that is going to be a very, very important. These are the databases service and we must say it's a storage service. Yeah. OK. So how we will create the storage account? So last five minutes are there. I think I have already completed this calculator. Only monitoring part is still left, so that how we can check the uh, service health. Okay, so for that purpose, Azure Monitor is going to be there. What is the role of Azure Monitor? It just uh, checks the complete performance of your application and services by collecting, analyzing, okay, uh, every particular cloud data. 
so there are different on premises environments as well so you can use the application insight log analytics alerts okay uh, you can customize the dashboard whatever that you want okay so these are the different uh, things from the third module okay now i just want to show you how to create the storage account So if you go and just check Azure Cosmos GB, okay, this is also one of the service, okay. <clears throat> and I must say it's a database service. So SQL database is also going to be there. Come back to our storage account. Okay, so now if I go and create the storage account. Here, make sure your storage account name is uh, unique. Okay. So it is getting accepted. So select the subscription, select the resource group, make sure use the storage account uh, name, then a proper storage account name, unique is there, and then uh, region, okay, uh, performance. Okay, if we'll go with the standard or you can go with the premium. So at the time of premium, you have to mention the uh, block blobs, file shares and page block. That option is coming for the standard. It is not coming. Okay, so it's a general purpose V2 account is there. Uh, now redundancy, as we have already mentioned, LRS, GRS. Okay, so if I'll go with the LRS, can I change it after creation of the account, storage account? Yes, you can. Okay, now in the advanced part, I'll just keep it as it is. I'm not making any changes. I just want to show you this part, okay, that exists here. So by default, it takes as a hot. If you want to change it to the pool at the time of creation, you can change it, okay? So I'll just go with the default one that is hot here. I can able to access from all the networks. Yes, I'll keep it as it is and then click on the next. OK. <clears throat> so there is a soft delete. It means once the blob is getting deleted, it is retained for the last se uh, seven days over there. OK, so yes, you can do it. And. I'll just keep the encryption type as a, a Microsoft managed keys. I'm not mentioning any uh, customer based uh, or customer managed keys. I'm not giving any my key to them. Okay, so I'll just go with the default one and I'll keep the support for blobs and files only. Okay, if you want all table, all the services, so you have to select that as well so that you can able to create the tables, queues and all. It's just for demo and test purpose. So I'll just keep it simple as it is. And here again, you have to mention the tags as well. Okay. Then click on the next and once the validations are getting passed, now you are able to create that storage account. Okay, so I think it just take one 